Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Naruto is thrown into a new world filled with yaokai, gods, dragons, devils part 1 before I start, please do support for more amazing content and comments for part 2, do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends and check out the description as well, let's start the video. The battlefield of the fourth great shinobi war was littered with scars, the world cried tears of rain from the immense damage caused by two individuals. The first being a young man with cerulean blue eyes, sunkest blonde hair, and three whisker marks on each cheek, his eyes were filled with pure determination and anger. He was Naruto Uzumaki and he was literally on his last leg, he had no more allies who could back him up in battle. Standing across from him was a man with white hair and scaly white skin, ten protrusions emerged from his back five near his shoulders and five near his hips, as well as a black assortment of ten magatama markings appearing on his back, one large one with a black rinnegan-like pattern within it and nine smaller ones arranged in rows below it. He was sporting a flesh collar and coattails of a heiori and two horns sprouted from his forehead. What are you going to do now Naruto? Anyone who could have helped you is dead now or injured. I extracted the rest of the eight tails from that fool killer bee, killed your best friend Sasuke, who did his best to protect you from my truth seeker balls, and I reduced all of the reanimated cage and Madara to ash. Even with the other half of the nine tails what are you capable of doing against me? The ten tails Jinch Kriki arrogantly said as a sadistic grin appeared on his face. Naruto stared back at his greatest adversary. I'll never give up Abito. I won't stop until I die. Naruto roared despite not having any power left, at best he might be able to maintain his nine-tailed chakra motor sage mode for maybe several minutes if he was lucky. Naruto, neither I nor my other half have any power left to lend you. The yang half of Kurama called out to his host. Naruto didn't respond how could he, the blonde promised that he would defeat Abito even if it killed him. Now is not the time to be stubborn and act like a fool. You must retreat for the time being it's better than dying. The yin half of Kurama growled in annoyance at his new host. The two of you know I can't do that. I wouldn't be Naruto Uzumaki if I did, I never go back on my word and I never break a promise. Naruto retorted to the nine-tailed duo. Ignoring the two foxes Naruto attempted to reignite his nine-tailed chakra mode and for a brief period of time his body was engulfed in an ethereal yellow chakra cloak that resembled flickering yellow flames. This was the power Naruto took from Kurama during his training with Killer B, so he can access this form whenever he wanted without having to bother either of the two Kuramas. Abito merely raised an eyebrow before raising his shakajim and unleashing a torrent of lethal purple flame-like energy. The energy itself destroying everything in its path Naruto dodged it at the last second before charging at the superior Jinch Kriki. Abito put no effort into blocking Naruto's strikes as he was capable of doing that with a single finger. You truly are annoying. Here I am trying to help this world and you simply want to drive it further into hatred and darkness. Don't you get it as long as people possess chakra and free will they will continue to fight against one another. Do you honestly think they'll put aside their differences and accept peace willingly? You're too naive, well it's an admirable attempt at peace with this little alliance, it won't last, as soon as the threat that you all had your eyes set on is gone. They'll go back to throwing sticks and stones at each other. It's always been that way and it always will be at least with infinite Tsukiyomi they'll be removed permanently. Naruto gritted his teeth. You don't know that. You haven't considered anyone else's feelings, you're doing this just because your childhood lover died. You are a grown man wanting to get together with a little girl. You goddamn pedophile. Naruto roared as he continued attacking, completely forgetting that only Sinjutsu-based abilities work on the ten tails inch Kriki. Abito narrowed his eyes before delivering an earth-shattering punch to Naruto's stomach, knocking him out of his nine-tail chakra mode. Don't you dare bring Rin into this. Abito growled before choke slamming Naruto into the ground before placing his foot firmly on the Uzumaki's chest. Let me make something perfectly clear to you, well I'll admit Rin's death is partially responsible for how I am right now. It's not entirely the reason why I'm doing this, just like you when I was younger I always wanted to help people to the best of my abilities. And I still want to help people, and this is the best way to do it, they won't have to deal with the loss of their loved ones anymore, they won't have to deal with war sickness or worse death. Once they become one with infinite Tsukiyomi they will live forever within their own fantasy world. Naruto could only stare on with hatred in his eyes, refusing to listen to the twisted Acha. Sighing in frustration Abito summoned forth one of his truth seeker balls before converting it into a glass sphere. Naruto's eyes widened as he remembered that glass sphere Abito had used it earlier on him and Sakura, sending them to a prototype version of infinite Tsukiyomi. Ah, I see you remember this. Abito chuckled in amusement. How could I not forget it? You sent me and Sakura-chan to some Jinjutsu-based world that was a flip-flop of our own world. That I don't have to explain how it originally worked. 
But this one is a bit different, I'm not sending you to some Jinjutsu world oh no, I'm doing something far worse to you. You've been a thorn in my side for a very long time Naruto Uzumaki, so I'm going to send you to a completely different world altogether to get you out of my hair for good. And don't bother coming back because if you do emptiness will be the only thing that will greet you here, you'll be alone. Abito said not entirely wanting to kill Naruto. It's for the best this world was a failure from the very start. And why you want to save this wretched world I'll never understand, Madara simply wanted world domination, he wasn't planning on putting himself in infinite Tsukiyomi at all. I have no intention of remaining in this world, and either way the god tree is about to bloom any second now. Abito explained. Naruto began to struggle as he tried to claw the Ichiha turned Jinch Kriki's foot off his chest but failed miserably. I won't let you. Naruto growled as Abito released the glass sphere as it floated centimeters above Naruto's head. Enjoy your new lease on life Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto's eyes widened further as Abito smirked as he made a single-handed tiger seal. The glass sphere began to glow brighter and brighter as the light engulfed Naruto's body. As soon as the light came and left, Naruto's body was nowhere to be seen, the glass sphere shattered into bits before reforming into a truth seeker ball. Sighing in content Abito allowed a small smile to appear on his face as he glanced up at the moon, it had multiple rings spread across it, with a total of nine tama on it. It's time to begin. Infinite Tsukiyomi. God. Nativity of a world of trees. Abito declared while making multiple hand seals. The moon produced an extremely potent light that engulfed the entire world, everyone was ensnared in the infinite Jinjutsu. Emerging from the ground Black Zetsu couldn't help but curse he was supposed to stab Madara and turn him into his mother Kagaya. Damn you Abito. The Black Blob cursed. He had ultimately failed to resurrect his mother and creator Kagaya Atsutsuki. Yoto Yaokai capital of Japan and the home of the Western Yaokai faction, ruled by Yasaka a nine-tailed fox Yaokai. A bright ball of light formed in the forest near the Imperial Palace, Naruto Uzumaki was dumped out of the light, releasing a groan of pain. Looking around Naruto did not recognize his surroundings however he can sense a foul disgusting aura floating through the air. However, Naruto did not move his body was still aching from whatever Abito did to him. Closing his eyes Naruto decided to try to rest for the time being until he could figure out where he was and hopefully find a way back to the elemental nations. Further up the path away from Naruto the sound of footsteps could be heard, it sounded as if someone was running. A young girl who could be no older than six years old, with blonde hair and matching eyes, she was sporting nine tails and a pair of fox ears. She was wearing a Maiko outfit and tall Jetta with white tabi. The sleeves of her Heiori feature a giant red star-shaped pentagram, surrounded by five smaller pentagrams in between the points. She was Kunu the daughter of Yasaka, and she was very scared right now. She had previously been playing outside of the Imperial Palace, protected by four of the most trusted guards that were hand-picked by Yasaka herself. However, they were ambushed by a group of stray devils who had allied themselves with the old Satan faction. The devils came out of nowhere and slaughtered two guards within seconds. The last two guards tried their best to protect Kunu, but their efforts cut short as they also have fallen to the ground. The little girl was running for her life, trying to escape her attackers. Blood was seeping out of the wound on her shoulder when the devils tried to drug her, and a puncture mark in her right thigh resembling a bullet wound, which was caused by demonic bullets. She barely managed to injure one of her attackers, but there was too many of them for her to win. She was trying to get back to the Imperial Palace every time she got close, they seemed to be one step ahead of her and teleported her further and further away. She could hear the sickening laughter, it was twisted in nature it didn't sound normal, she couldn't understand why did they want her. Quickly taking a right, the young girl dove into several large bushes, attempting to hide herself. And it seemed to work as she heard the devils run right past the bushes. Releasing a small sigh of relief Kunu stayed there for a little while before something caught her attention, looking to her left, she saw a blonde-haired man who couldn't be any older than maybe 17. Despite how scared she was Kunu gently reached out and grabbed Naruto's hand which was still warm. The immediate contact caused Naruto's eyes to snap open, causing Kunu to yelp as she jumped back. Naruto took notice of the little girl and her extra appendages. Do either of you see what I'm seeing? Naruto called out to his two tenants. Yeah she's a nine tails just like us. But she seems to be injured and scared, you better not let anything happen to her Naruto or I will eat you. Yankurama growled. I suggest you protect her for the time being, who knows she might be related to someone important. And perhaps they can help you in some way other than going back to the elemental nations, which is most likely a lost cause by now. Yankurama elaborated. Naruto's eye internally twitched at the yin half of Kurama's comment. You know I can't do that I have to go back. Naruto retorted before Yang Kurama interrupted him. And go back to what exactly Naruto? Most likely infinite Tsukiyomi's already been cast and everyone is probably trapped within it. 
and I highly doubt there's any way to dispel it either, so stop being so stubborn and be thankful that you're alive. Naruto frowned perhaps Kurama was right. We know you don't want to hear it Naruto, but it's for the best right now. Your only concern now is protecting this girl from whatever caused these wounds on her. Yin Kurama growled. Sighing in defeat Naruto replied to the two entities that were originally one. Fine the two of you win, I won't be able to win an argument against the two of you. But I got to ask why haven't the two of you become one again? Naruto asked as this particular topic has been bugging him for the last hour or so since he received the yin half of Kurama from his father before being vaporized. It mostly likely has something to do with the fact that we've been separated for roughly 17 years and we've basically become our own entities altogether. Either that or my other half being trapped in the stomach of the Shinigami made it impossible for us to merge together again. Yang Kurama said softly. Yin Kurama nodded agreeing with his other half. I would most likely go with the latter of the two, so in the meantime while we're recovering and regaining our power, I suggest you try to regain as much power as you can. And do avoid using your nine-tailed chakra mode for the time being and try using sage mode instead. Naruto nodded before turning his attention back to Kunu. Hey, are you alright Chibi-chan? Naruto asked while groaning as he sat up, despite all that happened to him, Naruto still managed to offer up a warm smile towards the young girl. Kunu nodded. My name is Kunu Notch Ibi Chan, and I'm the daughter of Yasaka, the current leader of Kyoto's Yaokai faction. She said while Naruto tilted his head to the side he had never heard of Yaokai. But pushed that thought aside as he decided to introduce himself. Well Kunu Chan my name is Naruto Yuzumaki it's nice to meet you. So why don't you tell me what happened and maybe I can help you out. Naruto said as Kunu nodded before explaining how she was attacked while playing in the garden ride outside the imperial palace. While Naruto had heard of devils before, he had never thought they were actual real creatures that existed. And he couldn't help but groan and curse out Ibido for sending him to such a weird world. Naruto closed his eyes as he began to draw on nature energy in order to enter into sage mode to get a better understanding of the area. Almost instantly Naruto noticed a distinct difference in between this nature energy and the nature energy of the elemental nations. There was a lot more malefic intent in this nature energy, but Naruto simply brushed it aside as Kurama's chakra was far more potent than this. Within seconds orange pigment formed around his eyes as his bluer eyes is changed to yellow with horizontal brick-like pupils. Naruto indeed could sense many signatures making their way towards him and Kunu, and none of them felt friendly. Standing up after feeling the empowering effects of sage mode, Naruto turned and glanced at Kunu who was staring at him with wide eyes. Kunu-chan stayed down I'll take care of them. No, you can't you're only human you'll die. She cried as the twisted voices of the devils could be heard getting closer. Naruto smirked as he couldn't help but chuckle. It's going to take more than a bunch of flying rats to defeat me. Naruto said before turning his attention to the newly arrived group of devils. They looked human, but also at the same time they didn't, their features were twisted and distorted, truly giving them the appearance of a group of demons. I'll give you one chance to leave and never come back. Naruto announced as the devil in the front of the group sneered. I don't think so boy. We're here for the little girl so if you hand her over now we won't hurt you too much. This caused Naruto to frown. Sorry but I can't do that. Whatever reason you want her for you can forget it, you're not getting her without going through me first. Naruto said while hitting his fist against his chest. You're awfully brave for a human. Too bad it seems your life is going to end tonight. Another devil roared before running towards Naruto. Naruto scowled at how sloppy the movement of this devil was, Chunin and even some genin had superior movement speed to this devil. But then again Naruto didn't know how powerful devils could get, he was hoping that there was none around the level of the tailed beasts in this group, because if there were he would be in trouble. Naruto easily sidestepped the devil before elbowing the devil in the chest, sending the sinister being flying away like a ragdoll. The devil's body tumbled across the ground before coming to a complete stop, the life and light that had been in his eyes a moment ago was gone. Naruto didn't like killing people, but the beings before him weren't normal by any means, he would have to kill them in order to get his point across. Attack him. Attack this lowly human now. Naruto was surrounded and if he counted correctly there was a total of 18 of these devils standing around him, including the one that was leading them. Crossing his fingers Naruto prepared his signature technique. Shadow clone jutsu. In an instant several dozen Naruto's exploded into life. W wa. They've got to be illusions. No. They're actual physical clones. They amazing. Kunu whispered as she watched Naruto from within the bushes. Now I like these odds. Naruto said with a cocky grin. Without warning the dozens of clones charged forward with either kunai in hand or Rasengan, his second signature technique that was developed by his father. Naruto watched on in disappointment as his clones demolished these devils. I thought they would have put up more of a fight than this. 
Naruto thought then again, he had spent the last 24 hours or so fighting against the ten tails inch Kriki. Releasing a sigh of slight disappointment, Naruto turned his attention back to Kunu, who was staring at him with stars in her eyes. Naruto dispelled all of his clones in an instant as he groaned slightly at the memories he received from them which were nothing useful. Although Naruto wasn't looking forward to releasing his sage mode, as it would leave him in an even more exhausted state than prior to meeting Kunu. Man, this is gonna suck Naruto thought before releasing his sage mode. The effects of his sage mode leaving him were felt immediately, hunching forward Naruto placed his hands on his knees to support himself. Naruto glanced at Kunu who was staring at him with her big golden yellow eyes. Wow. Naruto-san you're just like a superhero. Despite how tired he was Naruto gave a small chuckle. Um I wouldn't consider myself a hero, I just do what I believe is right. But you don't have to worry about those nasty devils coming after you ever again. Naruto said while reaching out to him as he gently ruffling Kunu's hair, causing the little girl to growl. Don't do that. She cried which in response Naruto chuckled again while scratching his whiskered cheek. Naruto was about to say something else when the sound of many footsteps could be heard. Spread out. Find Kunu-sama immediately. Search every path. Then several men wearing traditional Maiko outfits, with tall Jetta with white tabi as footwear and blue Hakama came into view. They both had a light brunette almost blonde hair, they also had fox ears and multiple tails. Both men's eyes widened and shouted. We found Kunu-sama. The two men quickly ran toward Kunu, and many more followed behind. In a few moments Kunu and Naruto were surrounded by both men and women, all wearing shrine maiden attire. While a few of them were human, most of the guards were yaokai, ranging from Karasu Tengu, Nekamata, and even multiple Kitsune. Are you alright Kunusama? Kunusama, we deeply apologize for allowing something like this to happen. Set up a defensive perimeter immediately. And someone please go inform Yasaka-sama immediately. As the guard surrounded both Kunu and the heavily fatigued Naruto. One of the original two guards that arrived first noticed Naruto who was covered in sweat and panting heavily. He also took notice how Kunu was sitting rather close to the blonde. Pardon me, Kunu-sama. The guard asked politely getting the young princess's attention. Yes. Kunu asked cutely. Who is this man? The Kitsune guard pointed at Naruto. Kunu turned her attention back to Naruto who looked like he was ready to pass out. Ah. I found him unconscious in the forest and he eventually woke up and saved me from the devils. Kunu replied with a small blush. I see the Kitsune guard acknowledged as he turned to face Naruto. Young man I'm truly grateful for what you've done in protecting Kunusama. The three-tailed Kitsune said as he bowed to Naruto. Naruto glanced at the Kitsune before him before sheepishly scratching the back of his head. It's alright. Why you don't need to bow to me, I just wasn't going to stand there and let those flying rats harm Kunu-chan. Naruto said. Just as Naruto finished talking to the Kitsune, another guard noticed who had arrived on the scene and immediately kneeled. Yusaka-sama has arrived. All the guards immediately kneeled. Naruto turned his attention to see what all the commotion was about, and almost instantly he gasped at what he saw. What he saw was a beautiful young woman with a voluptuous figure and very long blonde hair with matching eyes. She was a woman with delicate facial features, and her eyebrows are cut very short and round a symbol of nobility. Her hair was tied in a loose ponytail, reaching all the way down to her legs that ends in a spiral, with taut bandages to keep it in place. She was wearing a traditional shrine maiden attire, consisting of a white Hayori, a red Hakama, and a pair of Zmrai with white Tabi. And over her shrine maiden attire she was wearing a white coat held close by a red ribbon. Naruto also took notice of her fox ears and nine fox tails just like Kunu and Kurama. The woman sighed. There's no need to bow before me or be so formal at the moment, please stand. The woman named Yasaka said, as she turned her focus on to Naruto who is sitting on the ground next to a teary-eyed Kunu. H ha hu, ha hu. Kunu bursted into tears as she ran towards her mother. Yusaka embraced her daughter. I'm sorry Kunu Yusaka told her daughter while rubbing her head gently. Ha hu. Ha hu. Kunu continued to sob. Naruto, who watched on couldn't help but smile at seeing the mother and daughter reunion, but there was a small flicker of jealousy there for a second. However, shaking his head Naruto wiped away any form of jealousy he had. While he would want nothing more than to feel the love of a mother, he didn't want anyone else to feel the pain of being alone without any family like him. Naruto groaned softly as he forced himself to stand only to fall forward, however something stopped him from hitting the ground. Glancing to his right he saw the Kitsune guard who originally thanked him for saving Kunu supporting him as he had a small smile. I believe you've done enough for now, there's no reason to force yourself to do more, especially when you look like you're on death's door. Naruto dumbly nodded as he gave a foxy grin. Isaka finally released her daughter before turning her attention back to Naruto and gave him a smile. Thank you, young man. If you didn't save my daughter. 
I wouldn't be able to bear with the grief from losing her. Naruto felt his cheeks heat up, this woman was gorgeous in every sense of the word. I it's alright you Sakacha sama Naruto corrected himself, as he remembered how the people greeted her upon her arrival, and that Kunu called Yasaka the leader of the Yaokai. Upon hearing this Yasaka couldn't help but chuckle at Naruto's words. As you most likely know my name is Yasaka, may I ask, what is your name? She said as her voice sounded like a melody. With every step she took her massive bust jiggled ever so slightly, now Naruto was nowhere near as perverted as any of his senseis, and his godfather Jiraiya was in a league of his own. But Naruto was still a healthy young growing man, and seeing this woman jump started feelings that he had never experienced before. And my name is Naruto. Yuzumaki Naruto. Naruto said as he can hear the perverted cackle of both the yin and yang halves of Kurama. Isaka soon noticed something different about this boy in front of her, so did all of the guards surrounding them. The guard that had been supporting him felt it too, an immense amount of power coming from him, and it wasn't his own, it felt very similar to that of a kitsune, and yet he was human. Maybe it was a sacred gear of some kind, though she would get to the bottom of this although not now. Naruto as the young man was called appeared to be severely exhausted. Well Yuzumaki sent to show my appreciation I would like to offer you a room in the Imperial Palace. However, there is something I would like to discuss with you tomorrow if that's alright with you. Yusaka said politely. Naruto nodded seeing nothing wrong with that. Sure, I don't mind. Although you don't have to call me by my last name or be formal with me. Just call me Naruto everyone does. Naruto said in a friendly tone. A small smile appeared on Yusaka's face. As you wish Naruto come. She giggled as Naruto blushed again, she would admit he was cute, especially with those whisker marks. It had been roughly 12 hours since Naruto had arrived in Kyoto and saved Kunu. And true to her word, Yusaka indeed allowed Naruto to spend the night in the Imperial Palace which Naruto was grateful for. And everyone seemed to be really nice to him, it still felt weird having everyone being so nice and friendly, even knowing only a few months prior he had been named the Hero of the Hidden Leaf for defeating the God aka Pain. It was about noon, and Naruto found himself sitting in front of Yusaka's desk, as the blonde beauty herself sat behind the desk staring back at Naruto. You said you wanted to ask me a couple of questions Yusaka Asama. Naruto strained himself to use the Sama formality in Yusaka's name. Yusaka sighed. Naruto-kun you can drop the Sama, it doesn't suit you. And yes, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Naruto seemed to breathe a sigh of relief. Yes yeah, sure I'll answer anything you want me to. Naruto had no point in hiding any secrets for Konoha, so long as the questions weren't too personal he would answer them. Isaka seemed to smile at this. Well, what I want to know is how is it possible that a human like you can use such a pure form of chakra? The beautiful vixen asked before narrowing her eyes slightly. This is nothing personal I just want to make sure you haven't done anything unsightly to my kind. Naruto seemed to frown at this. Well you see I'm not actually from this world, Naruto said before pausing for a second to glance at Yusaka's reaction. Her once narrowed eyes widened, however Naruto could tell she was studying him for any sign of a lie. How do I know you're telling the truth? She questioned. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. Perhaps I know someone who could prove it to you. Naruto said as he formulated a plan before stretching out his clenched fist towards Yusaka, causing her to raise an eyebrow in confusion. Fist bump me. Naruto asked politely as Yusaka blinked once twice three times, she decided to humor him. Gently placing her fist against his everything stopped around Yusaka as her world went dark for a split second. Within seconds Yusaka came too, she was standing in ankle deep water, the area appeared to be almost a dark golden brown void. Turning around she saw nothing but emptiness, soon however a feeling of dread filled her stomach. What had Naruto done to her? Did he simply just try to gain her trust to get rid of her? She didn't have to wait long for her answer. Yusaka. Isaka turned around as she planned on giving Naruto a piece of her mind, only for her mind to go blank at what she saw. She saw Naruto standing there, but he wasn't alone, standing behind him were two massive kitsunes. However, they were different in many ways, for one they both had the upper body structures of humans, complete with hands and opposable thumbs, they looked almost identical to each other, besides one having red-orange fur and the other one having dark brown fur. Naruto she whispered before narrowing her eyes at him. At ease vixen, we're not from this world as the kid has already explained to you. And as for where we are currently, we're in Naruto's mindscape. Yang Kurama explained. And we're not the source of his chakra as that is something that is as old as us. The humans of our world have possessed chakra for the last thousand years because of our creator Hagoromo Atsutsuki, who wanted to share his power with the world. He was hoping that humans could connect to one another through chakra, sadly enough they weaponized it instead and used it for war. Yang Kurama nodded. That is how chakra came to be in our world, our creator was the first human to ever wield chakra. 
however, the original possessor of his chakra, attacked him a powerful beast known as Ten Tails, the first tailed beast that possessed almost infinite chakra. After defeating the beast sealing it within him, and as years went on and he got closer to his death, he realized that this beast was far too powerful to let loose on the world again. So, with the remainder of his power he stripped the beast of its power, sealing its husk in a celestial body, thus creating the moon. And divided its power into nine parts, those parts became the nine tailed beasts. I'm one of the nine tailed beasts as well. Yin explained further. Isaka nodded she understood what she was hearing, it's just that her mind refused to let her believe it. It's just a little hard to believe that a human could be capable of stripping a beast that powerful of all its power and then using its husk to create the moon. And you said there were nine tailed beasts, and yet there are two of you? Yusaka questioned while pointing a finger at the two Kurama. Seventeen years ago, we were originally one being, we were forced to attack Naruto's home village. By a masked man with powerful eyes known as the Sharingan which granted this man enough power to control us. We were ultimately stopped by Naruto's father, who summoned forth a death god himself to split us in half, sealing one half in Naruto and sealing the other half inside him, while his soul was consumed by the death god. Yin Kurama continued further. And then a man known as Arachimaru figured out a way to release us from the death god, and later I was sealed into Naruto by his reanimated father. Isaka was taken back by this information as she glanced at Naruto who seemed to be very uncomfortable. A person with a tailed beast sealed inside of them is known as a Jinchkriki, also known as power of human sacrifice. Were viewed as monsters and used as weapons of war. Naruto said softly while refusing to meet Isaka's gaze after a few seconds Naruto looked up. He was not sure why he just said that so openly, but something about Yusaka made him feel at ease. There was no anger or judgment in her eyes, he only saw concern and sadness in her eyes. That's awful why would someone so crudely seal a yaokai into a human? I know there is sealing magic capable of sealing beings as strong as the heavenly dragons. She spoke with a frown on her face. Why would anyone want to seal a yaokai into a human child? What are you talking about? Magic is just something you find in a fairy tale. Jutsu are real. The blonde-haired vixen frowned again. Are you seriously telling me you don't have magic in your world? Surely you've heard of at least Sinjutsu and Yujutsu. I can use Sinjutsu. Though I've never heard of Yujutsu before. Naruto explained as Yusaka gave him a look of interest. That's interesting you'll have to show me some time. Yusaka requested as Naruto nodded. However, I'm curious how you got here. Would you mind telling me? She asked in a polite tone. It's a long story, Naruto said as he looked out into the vast emptiness of his mindscape. Naruto felt a hand grab his shoulder and gave him a reassuring squeeze. Glancing up blue eyes met golden yellow ones, she gave a warm smile. I've got time. Naruto nodded as he took a deep breath this was gonna take a while. So, Naruto decided to start with Abito declaring war on the five great nations, which escalated into the fourth great shinobi war. Which later Naruto and Killer B joined in the war to help the allied shinobi forces deal with the Akatsuki and Kabuto's army of reanimated shinobi. Naruto then explained that he fought against six tailed beasts with the aid of Killer B and how Abito resurrected the Ten Tails. And when Madara joined the fray and with him and Abito in control of the Ten Tails, it allowed them to nearly wipe out the entire allied shinobi forces. And later with the arrival of Minato Naruto's father and the other three reanimated Hokage, they were able to tip the scales in their favor at least until Abito became the Jinch Kriki of the Ten Tails. Which ultimately resulted in Naruto's crushing defeat and the death of pretty much everyone he cared about and how Abito threw him into this world. After hearing all of that Yusaka simply stared at Naruto and she couldn't help but feel bad for the young blonde. Not only did he lose everything, but now he was in a strange land with only the two halves of Kurama at his side. Glancing at him Yusaka could clearly see the dead look in Naruto's eyes, even though he was staring at the floor of his mindscape. Isaka glanced at the two halves of Kurama as they both gave a gesture towards Naruto, they were basically telling her to comfort him. Isaka walked up to Naruto and shockingly she was a good deal taller than him because she could have accidentally suffocated him with her large bosom if he had been any shorter. Naruto wasn't paying a bit of attention, so please forgive him for flinching when Yusaka gently grabbed hold of him and pulled him into her embrace. Naruto was taken back by this action as he felt a warm sensation flow through his body, Naruto slowly hugged her back as he took in her scent. She smelled of a mixture of raspberries, honey, and pine forest. After a few moments of silence, Yusaka pulled back from Naruto before giving him a smile. Thank you for that, I normally don't get emotional like that. Naruto said softly while fighting off the small blush that developed from Yusaka's embrace and feeling her massive bosom pressed up against him. Perhaps it's time we head back to the real world, I would like to discuss some more things with you out there Naruto. Yusaka explained before giving a farewell to the two halves of Kurama. It was a pleasure meeting both of you. 
It was nice meeting you too vixen, and please call me Yang. Yang Kurama said with a grin. The same goes for me and please call me in. Yin Kurama spoke also sporting a grin. Naruto groaned as he face palmed at the antics of the two entities that were originally one, while Yusaka snickered behind her hand. Soon after Naruto and Yusaka vanished from the mindscape, leaving the two halves alone again. Yang glanced towards Yin. There's no doubt about it, she's perfect for Naruto. Unlike that dreadful pink-haired banshee of a teammate or that lavender-haired stalker. Yin nodded in agreement with his other half. I agree with you my other half, we just have to figure out a way to get them both together. But let's not rush this let them develop their friendship first, then we can focus on a way of getting them together. Naruto and Yusaka snapped back to reality as they glanced at one another before offering the other a smile. So, what is it you wanted to talk about? Naruto asked. Yes, there is something I would like to ask you. I would like to offer you a place here in Kyoto amongst us yaokai. Well it's not uncommon for humans to work alongside yaokai, such as priests and priestesses, however they are usually chosen by the Shinto deities or they are born into the role. Yusaka explained as Naruto nodded. So, you want me to be a priest? Naruto asked raising an eyebrow, it wasn't like he could actually say no to such an offer, he would have to be stupid too. Here he was in a new world, with no source of income, no place to stay, he was completely alone. Normally he would reject the offer, but he did not have the luxury, nor did he have the leeway when all the cards are stacked in Yusaka's favor in this instance. Yusaka brought her hand up covering her face as she giggled softly. Of course, not silly you don't fit the role of the priest. No, what I have in mind is something that would suit you a lot better. You did mention that you were a shinobi. She asked as Naruto nodded. Seeing him nod Yusaka smiled. I would like to enlist you in my personal guard and I would like to personally train you myself. I know while well using the yin or yang's power you could quite easily defeat me, but I want to increase your base strength. Naruto frowned at this he wasn't entirely sure how powerful Yusaka was, nor did he know what kind of ability she possessed. Not to be disrespectful or anything, but how powerful are you Yusaka? Naruto asked rather bluntly luckily for him Yusaka didn't take offense to it instead she wordlessly stood from her desk. Please follow me Naruto-kun, I shall demonstrate to you the extent of my power. And I want you to only use your own power, so I can gauge just how powerful you truly are. Yusaka gestured for Naruto to follow her. Naruto unconsciously swallowed the lump in his throat before following Yusaka out of her office. The feeling of dread filled his being, and he couldn't tell why, surely he could defeat her with sage mode. But Naruto was gonna find out why Yasaka was currently the most powerful yaokai alive to date. The blonde duo arrived at a rather bare grassy plain surrounded by trees. I would like to welcome you to my personal training grounds Naruto-kun, this is where we shall duel to see just how powerful you truly are. Yusaka explained as she snapped her fingers as the area around them became dark grey in color and rather foggy. Naruto looked around with a worried expression on his face. What happened and why is the sky grey? Naruto questioned. I have created a powerful barrier around this area to prevent any of our powers or abilities to damage or interfere with the lives of the humans of Kyoto. It's best that we keep them blind to the supernatural world, as the humans of this world would most likely declare war on us due to fear. Isaka explained as Naruto frowned why was it always war, why couldn't people just sit down and talk things out. Naruto nodded rolling his shoulder and cracking his neck Naruto was ready, even though he had never fought against anyone while wearing a kimono. Speaking of which Naruto was sporting a black and red kimono with an orange obi to hold it closed. And he was wearing a pair of wooden jettas similar to his godfather Jiraiya. Naruto watched Yusaka as she untied the ribbon that held her white coat closed before neatly folding it and placing it on the ground as well as placing her golden crown on top of it. Yusaka then slowly made her way towards Naruto before stopping a few meters away from him. Her once kind and friendly expression shifted into a serious one as her nine tails began to sway back and forth slightly faster than before. Are you ready Naruto? She questioned as Naruto felt a chill run down his back but nodded in response. Very well here we go. I'm going to start at 25% of my full power because I really don't want to hurt you too badly. Yusaka said as an ethereal golden yellow aura resembling a flame-like mist surrounded her body. The ground and gravel beneath Yusaka began to lightly tremble, as small stones and pieces of debris began to slightly levitate into the air due to the increase in power from Yusaka. Naruto was hit full force by Yusaka's power and took a single step back, seriously, this was only 25% of her power. This was insane, while well, people like Madara, Abido, Nagato, and possibly Itachi and Sasuke were stronger than her current power output, it was still far stronger than his current power without the aid of either half of Kurama. While Sage Mode may give him an edge right now however he doubted that it would be enough to defeat her at full power. Without warning Yusaka blurred out as Naruto blinked, Naruto hunched forward gasping for breath as an unbelievable amount of pain surged through his body. 
Glancing down he saw Yusaka's fist firmly placed against his abdomen, he didn't even see her move. Isaka took a step back as Naruto fell to the ground clenching his stomach, Naruto managed to muster enough strength to get into a kneeling position. Naruto steadied his breathing as he spat out a glob of blood before finally standing, while his legs buckled a little bit mind you. Okay that one was for free, but I'm not going to let you sneak up on me like that again. Isaka just grinned showing off her fangs. I wouldn't act arrogant or cocky if I were you Naruto. If you couldn't see me when I'm holding back this much, then there's no doubt in my mind, you'll never be able to defeat me on your own. At least not now she said before pointing a finger at Naruto. What caught Naruto's attention was a ping-pong-sized ball of condensed golden yellow energy, forming at the tip of her finger. Without warning she fired at Naruto, his eyes widened at the speed of this tiny projectile, quickly dodging the small sphere which demolished a monster-sized tree behind him. Naruto gasped at seeing such a large tree reduced to nothing but splinters and ash. That is one of the abilities one gains from using Senjutsu, preferably the Senjutsu that Asyakai use. Senjutsu is the power to control the flow of life energy. By controlling the flow of Kai, a person could strengthen physical bodies or cause vegetation around them to bloom or to wither. Knowing Senjutsu allows the reading of Kai and auras and to spy on the target state from afar. Disrupting the opponent's Kai or severing it can cause direct damage to living things. Yusaka explained as she watched Naruto make a cross sign with his fingers. Shadow Clone Jutsu. Naruto called out as a dozen exact replicas of Naruto appeared out of smoke surrounding Yasaka. Are you trying to confuse me with illusions? She retorted a little bit disappointed as she went to touch one of them, only to find out that it was real. Why it's an actual real clone. Yasaka said astonished that a human would be able to create replicas of themselves, something she had only seen Sun Wukong do. Naruto smirked as he finally had the edge on Yasaka, or at least he thought he did. Shadow clones, my signature technique. Normally this technique would divide your chakra every time you create a clone, however I'm different since I have so much chakra, it doesn't really divide my chakra anymore, it more or less creates weaker versions of myself. Although one good hit will be enough to dispel them, and I also gain any memories and experiences that my clones experience. Naruto explained. Isaka shook her head in disappointment. You shouldn't give out information on your techniques to your enemies Naruto-kun. It seems I have a lot to teach you, oh well we can call it student-teacher bonding time. She said before raising two fingers into the air while raising her other hand in front of her. Naruto had the urge to call her a hypocrite, she just explained how her senjutsu worked to him, and yet she criticizes him for giving out information on his shadow clones. But Naruto decided to remain quiet, he didn't want to get beaten up again, especially by someone this strong. We'll see about that. Naruto declared as his clones charged at the yaokai leader whose body was completely engulfed in blue flames. Fox fire. Heavenly incineration. The blue flames surrounding Yasaka exploded in a 360 degrees wave of immensely hot flames that left the ground charred and even caused multiple rocks to melt. The clones that Naruto had summoned were reduced to ash. Naruto stood there as his body shook and twitched as he brought his arms up and across formation to block Yasaka's flames. His skin was scorched by the heat of the fox fire, oh how he wished he had water release instead of wind release right now. Hey kid, remember you still have the chakra from our eight other siblings. That includes their chakra natures as well, channel Asobu's chakra into your stomach and perform the tiger hand seal. Yang called out to Naruto. Naruto internally nodded as he could feel the three tails almost calming chakra flow through him as he performed the tiger hand seal. Water release. Gunshot. Naruto roared as he spat out several condensed blasts of water at Yusaka. Yusaka raised her hand as several magic circles appeared in front of her blocking the blasts of water. Interesting so I guess you can use elemental abilities too, I must say you're full of surprises, but let's see how you handle this. Yusaka said while tapping her finger against the air as several ethereal symbols appeared in front of her. The area was filled with a thick purple mist. Naruto instantly covered his face with his sleeve, this mist was poison he could tell as it was causing everything to wilt around him. What am I going to do? Come on think, Naruto think. Naruto thought before Yin decided to help his buffoon of a host. You know just because the blonde vixen told you that you couldn't use our power doesn't mean we can't help you in other ways. Remember after receiving chakra from our other siblings, you gain an affiliation for all five changes in chakra nature, as well as boil, lava, and magnet release. So, you have a few ways to dispel this mist, either blow it away with a wind or attack Yusaka long range with magnet release. The yin half of Karama explained. Yeah, but how do I use all those different elements? I don't have to channel their chakra every time I want to use something other than wind release. Naruto retorted as both halves Kurama could only shake their heads in disappointment. You really are an idiot aren't you? Unlike our chakra you don't have to channel our siblings chakra it's already flowing through your chakra coils. Yang Kurama growled. 
Naruto quickly weaved through several hand signs. Wind release. Great breakthrough. Naruto cried as he unleashed a massive blast of wind from his mouth, blowing away the poison. Naruto set his gaze on where Yasaka was, well more precisely where she originally was. Naruto began looking around, but his movement was soon faulted as something grabbed his shoulder glancing to his left, he saw what looked to be a furry tail resting on his shoulder. Slowly turning his head Naruto came face to face with Yasaka who was more or less smiling at him. I believe this is enough playing around Naruto-kun. I would like to see your senjutsu though and see how powerful it truly makes you. Yusaka asked before pulling her tail away from Naruto, who quickly realized she was giving him the valuable time he needed to enter into sage mode. Naruto quickly calmed himself before closing his eyes and opening his senses to nature. Yusaka's eyes widened when she felt Naruto pulling energy from the ground, the trees, the grass, the world itself he was becoming one with nature. A familiar orange pigment formed around Naruto's eyes, his one cerulean blue eyes were now yellow with horizontal brick-like pupils. Naruto felt his body strengthened by the nature energy around him, although due to the barrier being placed, he was only able to tap into the nature energy within the barrier. Glancing down at his fist Naruto clenched them tightly as he set his sights on Yasaka, who seemed to be staring at him with a mixture of interest and surprise. Without warning Naruto vanished and Yasaka dodged Naruto's physical strike, but was then bombarded by an invisible force, sending her hurling across the training field. Gah. Yusaka groaned as she impacted the ground, quickly catching herself and pushing herself back up, she narrowly dodged another attack and once again was sent flying by an invisible force. What is this? I'm dodging his attacks, and yet I'm still getting hit. Yusaka thought as she began to draw on more of her power, Yusaka's power was great enough that only one comparable to Satan class and higher could defeat her. And from what she can gather Naruto while using his senjutsu was now on the lower levels of ultimate class devil. Narrowing her eyes Yusaka was soon enveloped in a dense shroud of golden yellow aura. While she wasn't going to use her full power against Naruto, she would use half of it combined with her Tauki. By channeling her monstrous amount of Kai, Yusaka could enhance her strength, speed, and toughness at will. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he could tell Yusaka was finally getting serious and not wanting to be rude he returned the favor. Shadow Clone Jutsu. Naruto roared as he summoned forth an army of clones, to be exact 100 clones. Yusaka was taken back by this, but she stood her ground as the army of Naruto's charged at her. This is going to be tricky. But I think I figured out the weakness to this technique I just have to find the original. But they all feel the same, it's as if each one of them is the real one. This is definitely a good tactic to use against an enemy who has poor sensory abilities. Yusaka thought before landing a punch on the clone in front of her. Said clone hunched forward before hacking out a glob of blood and exploding into a cloud of smoke. The force from Yasaka's punch tore apart the ground, as well as sent a shockwave knocking down several trees. As the dust cleared several of the clones were shocked by Yasaka's physical strength, while some charged in. For her part Yasaka did her best to dodge the attacks, however Yasaka once again found herself getting knocked around like a pinball by this invisible force. Naruto. Yasaka found herself getting knocked up into the air by several clones. Yuzu Yasaka began getting hit from each direction by Naruto's clones. Maki opening her eyes and glancing up as several dozen clones came screaming out of the sky down towards her. One man army barrage. The clones cried. Despite the beating that she had taken, Yasaka looked rather calm, and she only had a few scratches and bruises on her. The nine-tailed Yaokai's aura exploded from her body, sending shockwaves of power knocking away the clones and dispelling quite a few of them. And then NAH. Naruto growled as he felt the pressure of Yasaka's power being pushed against him. Man, she's strong. Naruto thought. She might be stronger than Kurama Naruto thought in a bewildered manner before said Kitsune snorted. You know that's rather insulting of you to say that. She's not stronger than me at least not in the terms of raw power. She obviously has a lot more abilities and techniques than I do know, and just to let you know Kit, when you fraud against me to gain control of my power, I was holding back against you. She's also holding back against you if she wanted to she could have killed you from the very beginning. Yang Kurama spoke to his host. Hearing this, beads of sweat formed on Naruto's forehead. But this certainly isn't good. Naruto thought aloud as two clones jumped down beside him. Let's do this you guys. Naruto announced before extending his hand as one clone began forming a Rasengan, while the other began channeling his wind chakra. You got it boss. The two clones cheered. Sage art. Massive Rasengan barrage. Many clones formed massive spheres of spinning chaotic chakra as they flew at Yasaka-like missiles. Clapping her hands together in a similar fashion to praying, Yasaka's immensely powerful aura took the form of a wall. The Rasengans clashed with the Wall of Aura, several large cracks formed in the wall, as it was gradually overpowered by the clone's assault. Isaka quickly jumped out of the way to avoiding getting shredded to pieces by the barrage of massive Rasengans. 
Isaka landed several meters away from the clones before she got an idea. Yes maybe that might work. Yusaka thought as she dropped down onto all fours as she channeled some of her aura into her tails, causing them to shoot out in different directions as they elongated. She then used her tails to either strike or crush the clones. One of Naruto's clones was quickly ensnared by Yusaka's tail. So soft her tail is so soft and fluffy the clone thought in absolute ecstasy before being crushed out of existence. While focusing on creating his Rasen Shuriken, Naruto couldn't help but groan at the memories he had gotten from one of his clones. Stupid clone Naruto grumbled and thought while the spiraling bladed sphere of death began to grow as it began to release a shrill noise. Are her tails really that soft though? Naruto's mind began to wander before shaking his head. However deep within Naruto's mind the Kurama duo couldn't help but chuckle. It seems we finally found something that Naruto likes about the vixen. Yin Kurama laughed. Yang Kurama nodded in agreement with a shit-eating grin. Oh yes we did my other half. Who knew the kid had a thing for animal girls with fluffy ears and tails. The two massive kitsune sealed within Naruto went quiet as they didn't want to rush this, but they had all the time they needed. Isaka turned her attention to Naruto as she saw him holding a chakra shuriken that seemed to be comprised of wind. That looks quite dangerous. But perhaps I can use it to my advantage, wind does increase the strength of fire after all. The beautiful blonde-haired vixen thought dangerously while opening her hand and conjuring up an orb of fox fire. Take this. Wind release. Grass and shuriken. Naruto roared while throwing the deadly chakra shuriken at Yusaka, who fired her blue flames towards Naruto's strongest jutsu. The immediate collision caused the two opposite elements to merge together, Naruto's eyes widened in horror. Damn it. How could I forget fire beats wind? Naruto thought instantly regretting his decision. Naruto jumped as the new intensified scorch release. Fox fire Rasen shuriken came flying right back at him. The attack instantly expanded forming a large dome of wind enhanced fox fire, engulfing the entire training field. Yusaka used her tails to shield her from the explosion, Naruto's clones shielded him although they were vaporized. The dome shook the training field sending out powerful shockwaves, but the dome gradually shrank in size before vanishing. The training field was a wreck, dense littered the entire field, the trees were reduced to ash, the grass had been burned. Flickers of blue flames could be seen all throughout the training field, it looked like a war zone. Unraveling her tails from her body, Yusaka couldn't help but flinch as she saw what had happened to her training field. Perhaps I went a little overboard. She thought before turning her attention to Naruto who was cloaked in a boiling red aura in the shape of a fox. Isaka narrowed her eyes at him, she told him not to use Kurama's power, but a closer inspection, she noticed his body was covered in burns. These weren't simple burns you can get from grabbing a hot piece of food or getting burned by hot water, no, these were easily second to third degree burns on his body. Naruto was panting heavily, he dropped to his knees as the chakra cloak vanished, the top half of his kimono was completely incinerated, allowing one to see the extent of the damage done to his body. Glancing to his left he can hear the footsteps of Yusaka. Sorry I had no choice but to use Kurama's chakra to protect myself from the explosion. Naruto said as he chuckled which quickly turned into a groan. Isaka came to a stop right in front of Naruto before kneeling before him. I'm not mad at you for doing that, I put too much power into my last attack and I got you hurt. Please forgive me. Yusaka said before bowing her head causing Naruto to get very uncomfortable. Look it's okay, it was an accident they happen all the time. I got hurt a whole lot of times while training, by myself and with others, I won't blame you for this. Naruto said. But I. Naruto cut her off. No. Naruto barked causing Yusaka to jump, for that split second Yusaka felt her body heat up at Naruto's dominant side. But as quick as it came it left just as fast. I will not let you blame yourself for this if anything I'm to blame for this. I shouldn't have used my wind release. Grass and shuriken against someone who specializes in fire-based abilities. Naruto said in a very calm manner, allowing the rare occasion of his true self to come out. Very well then Naruto-kun. But please let me heal you then. It wasn't a request or even a command. It was just a statement. Naruto wanted to argue, but the look in her eyes shut him up. That look in her eyes, it's scaring me Naruto thought as he felt a shiver go down his spine. However what Yusaka did next would be permanently burned into Naruto's memories. Yusaka began to loosen her white Hayori, allowing her Hayori to slide down her shoulders. Naruto's eyes bugged out of his head, a drop of blood came out of his nose as Yusaka twitched. Pervert. Turn around. She commanded as Naruto did as he was instructed, he was honestly terrified he had no idea what this crazy fox woman was planning. But Naruto now turned around Yusaka allowed her Hayori to drop down, leaving her upper body completely bare. Now Naruto I'm going to heal you now, so please try not to move around too much. She said gently which caused Naruto to raise an eyebrow, but he didn't want to turn around and get yelled at again. What do you mean? Didn't you say you were going to heal me? 
Naruto asked obviously confused. Of course, but the most effective healing is through skin contact. Which means we must be naked or at least partially naked for it to work. This form of healing takes the least amount of time and you may feel funny for a little while. Wah are you kidding me? Naruto practically yelled. And instead of answering him Yasaka moved forward wrapping her slender arms around Naruto's body and pressing her massive bosom into Naruto's bareback, causing the young Yuzumaki to jump and yelp. I told you not to move. Yasaka scolded him as Naruto's face was now as red as Kurama's eyes. How can I stay still when you're your Naruto fought to get the words out as he felt Yasaka squeeze him a little tighter causing her to squish against him. E. Stop moving. Yasaka yelled as she focused on pushing as much of her aura into Naruto's body to heal him. His burns and wounds began healing as Naruto developed a twitch in his left eye. He was trying his damnedest to keep the blood from rushing to his second head. And all the while the two halves of Kurama couldn't help but laugh at their Jinchikriki's misfortune. Naruto had finally begun adjusting to his new life in Kyoto among the Yaokai who peacefully coexisted with the humans of this beautiful city. Barely a week prior Naruto had been defeated by Yasaka in their sparring match. Naruto could have put up a better fight if it weren't for the space-time barrier preventing him from drawing in more nature energy. And surprisingly Naruto wasn't housed in the barracks where all of the guards usually slept, instead he was allowed to sleep in the Imperial Palace. It was early in the morning possibly 6 or 7 in the morning, and the hero of our story was dealing with his greatest adversary to ever exist. A small ball of energy known as Kunu, the tiny hyper Kitsune who made it her life's mission to never let him sleep in. The sound of snoring could be heard within a dimly lit room. Naruto was currently sleeping on an excellently made mattress and had his body wrapped around a body pillow cuddling with it. One more bowl the young Yuzumaki muttered in his sleep as he rolled around in his sleep, drool freely spilling from his mouth. Tap. 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 The pitter-patter of small feet could be heard from the other side of the door and without warning the door opened. A small yellow blur flew from the open door before landing on top of the unconscious Yuzumaki. Ugh. Naruto groaned as he nearly had the wind knocked out of him. Focusing his gaze on the weight that was laying on top of him, he saw a familiar blonde-haired girl with a smile on her face. Good morning Naruto on e chan Naruto resisted the urge to groan as he stared at the small nine tails sitting on top of him. While Naruto was annoyed he would never take his frustrations out on a kid if he did he be no better than the villagers back home. Sighing he managed to muster a smile. Good morning Kunu-chan. Naruto said while gently ruffling the girl's hair. Stop doing that. Naruto snickered as Kunu glared at him for messing up her hair yet again. Glancing towards the clock Naruto was surprised it was almost 8 o'clock in the morning. Wow she certainly is late today. I wonder why. Naruto pondered for a second. Hahu has something important to tell you so she sent me to wake you up. Kunu said with a cute expression, honestly the little girl was far too adorable for her own good. Really now? Naruto questioned. I wonder what Yusaka would want to talk to me about. Naruto thought he didn't have to wonder long. Kunu? Kunu did you wake up Naruto-kun? A familiar voice called out from the hallway before Yusaka entered Naruto's room. Ah, I see you're awake Naruto-kun. The blonde-haired vixen said with a smile. Please get dressed and meet me in the throne room, it's time to start the next phase of your training. Yusaka said with a smile as she clapped her hands together. But the events of Yusaka's healing session fresh in his mind, Naruto's body shivered and couldn't help but wonder what this crazy fox woman had in store for him. Alright I'll be down as soon as I can. Naruto replied getting a nod from the older blonde. Come on Kunu, you can play with Naruto later. Kunu pouted but followed her mother out of Naruto's room as she knew better than to argue with her mother. But the door closed Naruto let his head fall back down to the pillow as he stared at the ceiling. What the hell is wrong with me? Naruto had never felt this way before, it was a warm sensation in his chest, it felt like there were butterflies in his stomach and at times he even felt lightheaded. Naruto had thought of asking either of the two halves of Kurama but ultimately decided against it, he would find the answer to this on his own. Wordlessly Naruto kicked the covers off of him before making his bed, although it was far from neat this is Naruto we're talking about. Standing there Naruto stretched his arms over his head while letting the blood flow through his limbs before making his way over to his wardrobe. Naruto decided to wear a different color kimono besides black and red, he settled on the blue and purple one. Wonder what Yusaka wants to talk to me about. Naruto thought as he began to get dressed. Naruto had arrived at the throne room as he gently knocked on the door. Naruto waited a few seconds before hearing come in from Yasaka, giving him the signal to enter the throne room. Naruto had noticed that there were several other people in the room at the moment, one of which was Kurok as the current chief of the Karasu Tengu. He had red skin and yellow eyes, he also wore the attire of a mountain hermit, the man was incredibly kind and even welcomed Naruto with open arms. 
sitting across from Kurikas, was Inyakimi the current leader of the Inyagami clan, a role she took up after her former mate Nga had died 200 years prior. She wore a purple and white kimono with green and yellow butterfly designs on it and wore a dark blue outer wrap that had a fur pelt, which wrapped around her chest. At the end of her outer wrap, there also was another fur pelt. In addition, she wore a light blue necklace with an amulet of the Maiden Stone. She had pale skin long white hair, gold eyes, and possessed a crescent moon mark on her forehead. Naruto was indifferent about her as Inyakimi didn't really seem to care all that much about him, while she wasn't rude or nasty to him, she didn't really show him that much attention either. Man, she really creeps me out, it's almost as if her eyes are boring into my soul. Naruto thought as the female Inyagami continued staring at the young blonde for several more seconds before turning her attention back to Yusaka. So, do you have an answer to my request? Inyakimi said to Yusaka who seemed to frown as she shook her head. I'm sorry Inyakimi-san, but I have no interest in taking on a mate anytime soon. Yusaka growled while releasing a fraction of her aura. One thing Naruto found out after being around Yusaka for the last couple of days was that Kunu's father was a taboo subject. Naruto could only guess that the man truly hurt Yusaka and for some reason that angered the young Yuzumaki. Sighing Inyakimi glanced back at Yusaka. Inyakimi paused as she thought about her son Sesameru, who chose a human over a powerful yaokai like Yusaka. I see she said softly before standing and bowing towards Yusaka and Kurikas. Sorry for wasting your time then I bid you both a good day. Inyakimi said politely, but one could hear the strain in her voice. As she made her way out of the room she paused for a second as she glanced at Naruto before continuing on her way. Kurikas turned his attention to Naruto before offering the boy a small smile. Naruto my boy how are you doing? The man asked. I'm doing well thanks for asking. How are you doing? Kurikas chuckled. I'm doing fine, but as much as I would like to stay here and listen to some of your life stories, I must unfortunately leave as being the leader of a clan is tiring work. Kurika said before standing and taking his leave. I bid you both a good day. This left Naruto alone with Yusaka as she took a deep breath while rubbing her forehead. I'm glad that you could make it Naruto-kun. She said a little frustrated. Is everything alright Yusaka? You seem a little stressed out. Naruto questioned as he was genuinely worried about the blonde beauty before him. It's nothing really. Just the usual people coming and trying to get me to marry them or their children. Yusaka groaned, she had no intention of marrying someone she barely even knew, she already made that mistake once, and she would be damned if she would let it happen again. Naruto the reason why I called you here is because of your inability to wield the abilities that are common amongst us yakai, priests and priestesses. Yusaka got straight to the point. Naruto raised an eyebrow confused as to why Yusaka would ask him something like this. Um what brought this on? Naruto questioned curious as to why Yusaka would bring something like this up. I simply want to know whether you would like to gain the ability to use our variant of Sinjutsu as well as magic and Yujutsu. Naruto frowned after hearing this, he wasn't the kind of person who liked being handed things on a silver platter. He'd rather earn it through sweat, tears, blood and hard work. I don't feel right just receiving something like that without earning it through hard work and training. Naruto said as Yusaka gave him no physical reaction as if she knew he was gonna say that. Well unfortunately this is the only way you can gain these abilities, you have no supernatural abilities other than your chakra. Yusaka retorted in a calm manner. So, you're saying I couldn't obtain these abilities through training? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. While training with you the other day I had the chance to scan your body with a spell. And your body holds no form of magical power or spiritual power in it. In layman's terms it's impossible for you to gain this power without outside help. Yusaka said causing Naruto to frown, it wouldn't be the first time someone told him he couldn't obtain something. But Naruto had a knack for making the impossible possible, but judging by the look on Yusaka's face she was dead serious. So, what do you have in mind? Naruto asked curious as to what she had in mind. There are multiple methods I could use to help you obtain these powers. However, the first one is the most dangerous one of all, and the chances of you dying are extremely high if it's performed wrong, and I'm nowhere near skilled enough to perform it. So, I'm not even going to bother explaining it, the second way is for you to become a yaokai yourself however, only the Shinto deities can do that. And the third way is the method I had in mind anyways, it's the safest way to. I will temporarily link you up to the Lee lines of Kyoto. Yusaka explained. Lee lines? Isn't that the immense spiritual power that flows throughout the city? Naruto asked as he remembered Yusaka talking about the Lee lines and her connection to them. Yusaka nodded happy that Naruto remembered that little bit of information she told him prior to this meeting. I'm glad you remembered that. However, it will take time for me to prepare the ritual which could take anywhere from a few minutes to possibly a few hours. So, I ask you now will you allow me to conduct this ritual on you? She questioned as Naruto went quiet. 
The throne room went silent for a minute or two before the young Uzumaki finally spoke. So, this is the only way I can gain these abilities. Naruto asked as Yusaka nodded. All right I accept. Wonderful. Then I will have someone fetch you when the ritual's prepared. Yusaka said with a smile. And in the meantime, would you please keep Kunu company? Yusaka requested as Naruto nodded, he had no problem spending time with the energetic young Kitsune. Sure, no problem I'll see you later then. Naruto said before leaving. After Naruto left the throne room, Yusaka was left alone before she stood up from her throne. I'll see you real soon Naruto-kun. She whispered before starting the preparations for the ritual. I'm starting to get excited, I'll be able to train Naruto-kun alongside Kunu. Yusaka said with a smile as she truly was starting to like Naruto, he was able to lighten the mood and always managed to bring a smile to her face. Naruto walked throughout the halls of the Imperial Palace in search of Kunu he checked everywhere including her room and her usual hiding spots, and yet she wasn't in any of them. Where is she? Naruto thought as he was starting to get worried. Use sage mode that will be the quickest way to locate her. Yinkarama called out to Naruto. Naruto wordlessly closed his eyes before taking in some nature energy. However, before Naruto could perfectly synchronize the nature energy with his spiritual and physical energies, he was interrupted. Naruto-san. Naruto turned around and came face to face with Fayoi, the Kitsune guard he met after saving Kunu nearly a week ago. The two quickly bonded and became friends. Fayoi how are you doing? Naruto greeted the man with a smile, despite the seriousness of the situation at hand. Ah you know same stuff different day the three-tailed Kitsune replied. Naruto would love nothing more than to sit down and talk with him, but he had pressing matters at the moment. Look Fayoi I'm kinda busy now. So, I'm going to have to cut this kind of short. You understand right? Naruto said as Fayoi raised an eyebrow in confusion. Really now? So, what's so important that needs your attention right now, perhaps I can help you. This was the last thing Naruto wanted, to cause mass panic within the Imperial Palace and amongst all the Yaokai in Kyoto. Look I'm looking for Kunu right now I promised Yusaka that I would spend some time with her. And I can't find her Naruto said softly as he noticed the shift in Fayoi. The man's expression changed from a relatively laid back to serious in an instant. Then we must alert Yusaka-sama at once. He said in a serious manner as Naruto fought the urge to face palm. Look I'm trying not to cause mass panic right now. I can locate her quite easily with my senjutsu, so just give me five minutes. Please just give me five minutes that's all I'm asking, if I can't find her in that small window of time, then please by all means go to Yasaka. Naruto said. Fayoi was slightly taken back by Naruto's shift in attitude. You're certain you can find Kunusama in such a small window of time? Naruto nodded it wouldn't be the first time he had to find someone, although with sage mode active, it would be much faster. Alright go ahead. Naruto nodded before closing his eyes as he finished synchronizing his chakra with the nature energy inside him. Fayoi nearly jumped back at the increase in power Naruto released, everyone stopped what they were doing and set their gaze on Naruto. The male yaokai gave him either looks of jealousy or pride, while the female yaokai all gave him looks of lust. Naruto's eyes snapped open. I found her. Fayoi looked at Naruto with a look of disbelief. You found her already, well it looks like you were right. Well then go get her before anyone realizes she's gone. Naruto didn't need to be told twice as he disappeared in a blur of speed, leaving Fayoi standing there by himself. And to think he's only human ha, huh? he's gonna put most of us to shame. Fayoi whispered to himself. Kunu was humming a light tune as she sat on her favorite swing. Every so often Yasaka would take her daughter to this very park, but as of lately Yasaka was unable to do so as often as she would like. This said the young Kitsune missed playing in this playground, but she was too young to understand how difficult it was being a faction leader. The role she would take up whenever her mother decided to retire from the role of faction leader. Ahu Kunu whispered wishing her mother could be here. You know you really shouldn't leave without permission or an escort Kunu-chan. A familiar voice called out from behind Kunu. Said princess jumped off the swing as she quickly turned around and saw Naruto standing there. Naruto Ani san what are you doing here? Looking for you. Kunu frowned. Did Hahu send you here? Naruto shook his head. No, she didn't. In fact, she told me to spend some time with you. And don't worry I already sent a clone back to the Imperial Palace to inform every one of your whereabouts. Naruto explained as Kunu's expression went south. So, I have to go back. The little girl said on the verge of tears, this caused Naruto to freak out. No. No 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 no. Please don't cry, I said I was going to spend time with you. You don't have to leave right now. Naruto said trying his best to prevent Kunu from crying. That was the last thing he needed Yusaka finding out that he caused her daughter to cry. Really? You better believe it. Naruto said with a cheesy grin. Although what Kunu did next shocked the young blonde. She rocketed herself towards Naruto flying into his chest, causing him to take a step back. Ugh. 
Naruto groaned as the girl nearly knocked the wind out of him. I love Ani-sama. She declared with her face buried in his kimono. This action took Naruto by surprise, sure Hinata told him that she loved him when she confronted Nagato Pain. Because if she truly loved him why didn't she confess to him earlier, when he actually needed it, and after everything was said and done the confession left him feeling empty. But this, this was different, and after hearing Kunu Naruto couldn't help but smile. Is this what it feels like to have a baby sister? Naruto thought as he felt warmth fill his body. Heh. <laughs> I Naruto began before he paused for a second, this is a lot harder than he originally thought it was. I love you too Imto. Naruto said before ruffling Kunu's hair. Ma, stop doing that Ani Isama. Kunu huffed at Naruto who couldn't help but chuckle in amusement. Sorry but I can't. Naruto said with a smirk causing Kunu to tilt her head in confusion. Well why not? She asked with a cute expression on her face, Kunu was truly too cute for her own good Naruto, had to resist the urge of hugging her. Because it's my job as your N plus N. From afar Yasaka watched the interactions of both Naruto and Kunu with a smile on her face. Originally, she had thought that she had put too much trust in Naruto. But after witnessing this, whatever fears that still lingered on seemed to fade away. She truly did miss her bonding time with her daughter Kunu very much so, but she had some free time on her hands right now. After all she had already completed the preparations for the ritual she was going to perform on Naruto tonight. Without even glancing in her direction Naruto could tell Yasaka was watching him. Hey, Yasaka I know you're there come on out. Naruto's little announcement caused Kunu to freeze as she saw her mother coming through the clearing. Not even a second later Kunu bolted towards Yasaka before jumping into her mother's embrace. Hahu you're here. Kunu squealed with joy at seeing her mother. In return Yasaka gave her daughter a warm smile. I'm sorry Kunu. I've been so busy lately that I haven't been able to take you to this park you like so much. Yusaka said gently while rubbing her daughter's back. Naruto smiled at the scene before him. Turning to the side as he rubbed his arm before gripping it tightly, the smile he once had faded as he stared off into the blue sky. Naruto-kun are you alright? Naruto glanced at Yusaka as he nodded. Yeah I was just lost in my thoughts for a second. Naruto replied as Yasaka nodded, she understood it would take time for the young Yuzumaki to heal, not physically, but emotionally and mentally. Just to let you know the preparations for the ritual are complete. So, whenever you're ready. Yusaka said offhandedly as Naruto nodded. Ritual? What ritual Hahu? Kunu asked with her head tilted to the side in confusion. Smiling at her daughter Yusaka gently rubbed her head. It's nothing you have to worry about Kunu. It's just something to help Naruto-kun. Kunu cutely nodded. So Imto what is it you wanted to do? Kunu glanced at Naruto as she smiled. I want to spend time with you Ani-sama and Hahu. The little girl exclaimed with pure joy. She really reminds me of when I was younger. Naruto thought. Isaka-sama. The voice called out from behind the blonde trinity, almost instantly Isaka sighed as she fought the urge to pinch the bridge of her nose. As several yaokai guards came up to their esteemed leader. What is it? Yusaka asked in a semi-annoyed tone. The council has called for an emergency meeting and it requires your presence yasaka sama The first guard said nervously as he noticed the glare he was getting from his leader. Do you know why they called this meeting? Yusaka asked with an eyebrow raised. Both guards shook their heads. Sadly no they simply told us to find you. Sighing in defeat Yusaka glanced at her daughter and Naruto. I'll be right back. Hopefully this isn't one of those long dragged out meetings. Yusaka groaned showing her dislike for a majority of the council. Kunu's eyes widened as she watched her mother begin to walk away with the two yaokai guards. Naruto gently placed his hand on her shoulder. She'll be back I promise you. In the meantime, let's play a game or something. Naruto said trying to keep the young girl happy. Hahu Kunu thought as she watched the retreating form of her mother. Okay Ani-sama do you know how long Hahu will be gone for? Naruto shook his head. I honestly don't know but don't worry she'll be back soon I promise you. Naruto said with a smile. Isaka walked back into the throne room as she noticed the entire room was full. Inyakimi and Kurikas were also present as they both seemed annoyed. Now that Yusaka sama is here can we start this meeting already I have a lot of things I have to do today. A young man with grey hair and yellow eyes asked. Patience, Jin. The elderly man said who possessed bright pink skin and red eyes. Be quiet you senile old fool. I don't care if you are an oni. Jin retorted. You're just like your father, arrogant and prideful Rajin. The oni mocked. All right enough of this. Kurikas declared. Yusaka Haim is here now so let's get this meeting done and over with. As I'm sure we all have things we have to do today. The Oni nodded before clearing his throat. Yusaka Sama the reason why I called this meeting was I noticed that blonde haired boy you've been around. We want to know what are your intentions for the boy. Well most of the council looked at each other in confusion, they had nothing against the boy he hadn't done anything to them. 
Isaka eyed the old man in front of her, in truth she never liked the senile old fool either. Well Baldo-san my intentions are really none of your concern. All you need to know is Naruto would be a great asset to our faction. Yusaka said well Kurikas had already taken a liking to Naruto. And Yukimi interjected. So, you don't feel anything romantic towards this boy Yusaka-san. Isaka was taken back by the Inugami straightforwardness, perhaps she was still upset that Yusaka refused to marry her son. Did she actually like Naruto in that kind of way? No, she had only known him for a little over a week, there would be no way she would harbor such feelings for Naruto at least not yet. No. I do not feel any romantic feelings towards Naruto, as I've only known him for a little over a week. I consider him a friend. Yusaka replied with an emotionless expression. Well you heard her Baldo-san, she considers the boy a friend now can we leave. Jin announced. Be quiet this meeting is far from over. Baldo snarled at the young Reijin. Oh, for the love of a Amaterasu. Yusaka palmed her face the last thing she wanted to happen was for these two to start bickering again. Would you just get on with the damn meeting? Yusaka declared unleashing a large amount of killer intent, silencing the Oni and Reijin. Baldo compassed himself. I must say I don't share your opinion or your fondness for this boy. He could be a spy a threat to our very faction, so therefore I have already decided to take care of him myself. Baldo declared as many of the other Kinsilnamers only stared at him with looks of disbelief. However as soon as those words left the old Oni's lips, an incredible amount of spiritual power and killer intent came crashing down on him. Who gave you the right to go behind my back and do something like that? Yusaka growled as she stood from her throne, as a thick golden aura surrounded her body. I believe that's a little uncalled for don't you think so Baldo? Inukimi said while glaring at the oldest Kinsilnamer. Kurikas nodded in agreement. The boy has done nothing wrong, he's been nothing but helpful to me and Yusaka Haim. Kurikas spoke calmly, but one could clearly see the anger in his eyes. Can't you all see it? The boy's blinded you. The Oni roared before getting blasted with a torrent of pure golden ore. Yusaka stood there with her hand extended. Guards take this senile old fool down to the prison. Hi. Several Yaokai guards seized Baldo while taking him out of the room. This meeting is dismissed I need to make sure my daughter's all right. Yusaka declared as she left the room in a hurry. Kurikas stood from his chair. Well that was a complete waste of time. I knew Baldo had a dislike for humans I never knew he would take it that far. He thought aloud before leaving the room. And Yukimi watched as the other members of the council left. I wonder what's so special about that boy. Naruto, I believe that is his name. Perhaps I should pay him a little visit sooner or later. And if Yusaka hasn't claimed him already perhaps she thought before shaking her head. No, I won't fall for some human. No matter how powerful or special he is. She thought aloud before leaving the room. I'm gonna get you Kunu-chan. You'll never catch me on Isama. Naruto had decided to teach Kunu how to play tag, and the six-year-old Kitsune was a natural at it. The fact that she was incredibly fast for her age, even faster than most kids in the Hidden Leaf Village. Of course, Naruto could have easily caught her if he truly wanted to. But he wanted her to enjoy herself, as it was no surprise to him that she didn't have many friends if not any. Plus, he was sure Yasaka would appreciate it if he expelled some of the boundless energy trapped within Kunu. Naruto there are multiple signatures around you, and none of them are friendly. Naruto froze after hearing Yang Kurama speak to him for the first time today. Naruto narrowed his eyes. Are you sure? Naruto really had no reason to question Kurama, but he did anyways. Why you doubt my words? No not at all. Can you do me a favor? Naruto asked as he could picture the expression on both halves of Kurama. Depends on what it is. Yin Kurama asked. The two of you can manifest yourselves outside of my body right? Naruto asked. Yeah, of course we can. We can remain outside for about an hour, however any longer, and your life force will begin to wither away. The Yang half explained. Why are you asking us this now? I need the two of you to keep an eye on Kunu-chan for me. Because I'm going to take care of whoever's out there watching us. Naruto said as two small orbs were ejected from the seal on his stomach. The first orb was golden yellow, while the second one was reddish orange. The small orbs took shape, taking the form of a miniature Kurama the size of a common house cat. Imto come here for a second. Who knew hearing the seriousness in Naruto's voice came running over to Naruto before noticing the two chibi Kuramas. Ani-sama what's the matter? And who are they, I've never seen Kitsune like them before. Kunu asked. Naruto kneeled down on Kunu's level. I'll be right back there some uninvited guests over there and I want to make sure they're not going to cause any trouble while we play tag. So, Yin and Yang over here are going to protect you I'll be right back I promise you that. Naruto said with a cheesy grin. You promise. The promise of a lifetime, I never go back on my word and I never break my promises. Naruto said with a foxy grin. You better believe it kid, this blonde haired idiot has never broken a promise before. 
Yang said while sporting a fang grin, while completely ignoring Naruto's protests. Don't worry we won't let anything happen to you little one. Yin said in a gentle tone or as gentle as he could muster. Okay please hurry back on Isama Kunu said cutely. No problem I'll be right back. Naruto declared before clapping his hands together as his body was engulfed in a golden yellow chakra cloak that resembled flickering flames. Within an instant Naruto disappeared in a yellow flash. Both Karamas turned around as they narrowed their eyes. Someone's coming. Yang growled as he stepped in front of Kunu, despite being small his power was comparable to a low-tier ultimate class devil. Yin stood behind Kunu as he was ready to aid his other half if it was a hostile making its way towards them. However, what emerged from the forest caused both Karamas to be at ease it was Usaka. Ban. I know someone's gonna complain about Yang Karama being on the lower levels of ultimate class devil. This only applies to Chibi Yang Karama, who only has access to a quarter of his power at best. Kunu. Naruto-kun. She called out. Hahu. Kunu cried with joy before running towards her mother. Yusaka turned as she saw her daughter before quickly catching her daughter in her embrace. Oh, Kunu, you're alright. The older Nine Tails said with much relief in her voice. Quickly glancing around she didn't see Naruto anywhere as she frowned, but much to her surprise, she saw chibi versions of both halves, Kurama staring at her. Yang-sama, Yin-sama, where is Naruto-kun? Naruto should be back any minute now, we detected some hostile signatures around here, so he went to go take care of them. But to make sure that your daughter was not alone he let us out to protect her. Yin responded. You should be able to detect him. He is using his nine-tailed chakra mode after all. Yang said in a lazy manner. Before Yusaka could even answer Naruto appeared in between her, Kunu and both halves of Kurama. Yusaka you're back. Naruto said with a smile. Yusaka was staring at Naruto this was the first time she had seen him using his chakra cloak. Yes, the meeting was a complete waste of time. Yusaka said as Naruto deactivated his chakra cloak. Did you find anyone? Naruto nodded as he sighed. Yeah I found a small group of pink skin yaokai. Although as soon as I approached them they ran away. Naruto sounded almost disappointed. Yusaka breathed a sigh of relief. That's good they didn't cause you any trouble. And just to let you know they are commonly known as oni. Yusaka explained. But why would they come after us? Naruto asked. Their clan leader Baldo, he saw you as a threat and wanted to get rid of you. However, he won't be causing you any more trouble. He was a senile old fool who had a strong dislike for humans and downright hated half-breeds. People like him don't have a place in the council he would do anything to get his way. Yusaka said with narrowed eyes. Well what is done is done. Yusaka nodded agreeing with Naruto before turning her attention back to Kunu, who was hugging her mother's leg and refusing to let go. Giving a motherly smile she gently patted Kunu's head. They spent the rest of the day playing with Kunu. Even both halves of Kurama spent some time with the energetic Kitsune, although they soon retreated into the seal after Kunu set her sights on them. The scene opened up to a familiar bare grassy plain surrounded by trees, the wind gently blew through the area. It was quiet, the animals were minding their own business foraging for food or items to create nests. However, this peace and quiet was interrupted when a large object was sent crashing into a tree. The impact of said object not only caused the tree to crack, but also to fall over. Ooh. Naruto groaned as he leaned up against the newly created tree stump. At closer inspection Naruto was only wearing a pair of black kung fu pants and shoes. Glancing up a large orb of blue flames came screaming towards him, with quite a bit of effort Naruto was able to avoid the deadly attack. Standing in front of him was Yusaka who was wearing a teal kimono blouse, which was held closed by a black obi and dark purple kung fu pants and shoes. She was staring at him without a shred of sympathy, Naruto knew she wasn't going to hold back, especially after the success of the Leeline ritual. But seriously they've been at this for the last hour and a half, she was using him as her personal punching bag. And wasn't allowing him any time to perform hand seals or gather nature energy. Off on the sidelines one could see the Chibi Karama duo watching the training match well rather one-sided fight going down. She's not giving him any room to breathe or even recover. I like her style this should be able to whip the kit back into shape. Yang Kurama snickered as his other half nodded in agreement. I agree. So far, she's a better teacher than that pervert Jureya, Kakashi and even Jayuki's former host Killer B. And I'm sure you'll agree with me when I say she's stronger than all of our siblings except for Jayuki. Yin Kurama elaborated. Yang Kurama thought for a second as he nodded in agreement, Jayuki was indeed stronger than Yusaka by a good amount. It amazes me at how powerful some of the beings are in this world. Especially the beings in this top 10 strongest beings the vixen has talked about. I wonder how 10 tails would stack up in the top 10. Yang pondered for a second before turning his attention back to his host. Naruto was dodging Yusaka's tails as they shot forward like spears. 
this isn't good she's got me on the defensive, she's not giving me any time to perform ninjutsu. Naruto thought completely forgetting about his ability to now perform magic and jujutsu. While Naruto could perform magic since it was dependent on his imagination, well he absolutely sucked at jujutsu. Naruto jumped back creating some distance in between him and Yusaka as she came charging forward at him. You are not getting away from me that easily Naruto-kun. She yelled while giggling malevolently. Naruto snapped his fingers, hoping that he can at least perform one spell. And as if a deity had been watching over him this entire time, several orange magic circles appeared around Yusaka. Orange chains shot forth from the magic circles quickly ensnaring the vixen. Giving a satisfied grin Naruto jumped up in the air releasing a cheer of joy. Don't you think it's a little too early to be celebrating Naruto kun. Yusaka said in an innocent tone before shattering the chains. Naruto's eyes widened before narrowing. God damn it Naruto cursed under his breath. Isaka gently tapped her finger against the air as numerous ethereal gold and yellow symbols appeared in front of her. Yujutsu. Naruto thought as he narrowed his eyes wondering what she was going to do. And yet nothing happened now Naruto was on guard she had to do something. Quickly Isaka launched one of her tails at Naruto, fortunately the young Yuzumaki dodged, but upon her tail hitting the ground, the impact not only caused tremors to travel throughout the area, but also left a decent crater in the ground. What? Is she really trying to kill me, I'm pretty sure that would've snapped my spine in two if it would've connected Naruto thought in a frightened manner. Although what creeped Naruto out even more was the fact that she had a warm inviting smile on her face the entire time. God that smile alone is enough to draw you in and make you feel so safe and then bam. You're as dead as a doornail. Naruto thought. What's the matter Naruto you're not scared of me, are you? Yusaka said in a fake hurt tone. Oh, that's just dirty she's trying to draw me in now. Naruto thought as he decided to fall back on his new favorite spell, it was nothing advanced it was very easy to do. Opening his hand Naruto gathered a large amount of his spiritual power into his palm, forming it into a ball. Naruto fired the blast of spiritual power at Yusaka, who swatted it away like it was nothing more than a fly. You're going to have to put a lot more power into it if you want to hurt me. Naruto made a familiar cross hand seal. Oh yeah try this on for size. Shadow clone jutsu. Naruto roared as the training field was full of Naruto clones. Get her. One of the clones shouted as they all charged forward. This seems a little unfair to me. There is a hundred of you and just one of me. Yusaka said with a pout, when she wanted to be she could be just as cute if not cuter than her daughter. I'm a shinobi we don't fight fair, we lie, cheat, steal and kill to get what we want. Although I'm not good on the killing part, I only kill when it's absolutely necessary. Naruto explained as he failed to notice Yusaka's smile shift into a grin. Well if you're not going to fight fair then I won't either. Yusaka said as she began to undo her obi. Her actions caused all the clones to stop in their tracks. Boy. What the hell are you doing? Glancing up at the clones Yusaka gave them an innocent smile. What does it look like I'm doing, I'm removing my kimono blouse. You're fighting without your shirt on so I'm going to do the same. She replied knowing that fighting naked from the waist up would give her an unfair advantage against Naruto. No matter how dense he could be at times, she knew he was still a growing teenage boy with uncontrollable hormones raging throughout his body. What the hell are you all doing get her now? The original Naruto screamed as all the clones snapped out of their funk before continuing their assault. Yusaka frowned as she was forced to jump back before tightening her obi. I thought that would have worked maybe I should have done it a little faster. She thought. Rasengan barrage. Narrowing her eyes as she watched the army of clones come charging forth with deadly spheres of spiraling chakra. Oh, heavenly flames carried from the heavens down to the earth. I beseech thee lend me your strength and allow me to incinerate my foes. As I unleash your heavenly wrath. Infernal blaze of the nine-tailed fox. Yusaka chanted before stomping her foot on the ground. The ground underneath the clones began to turn red, as cracks formed, the earth itself had begun bubbling turning into boiling lava. Some of the clones were instantly reduced to ash, while others jumped into the air to avoid the lava. Soon afterward several pillars of ghostly blue flames erupted from the lava shooting into the air. The pillars of flames expanded catching even more of Naruto's clones. Water release. Ripping torrent. Wind release. Rasengan. Typhoon water vortex technique. Isaka watched in amazement as a large tornado made out of water and wind clashed with her infernal blaze of the nine-tailed fox. The resulting collision caused a large amount of steam to fill the area, quickly narrowing her eyes, Yusaka released a burst of aura pushing away the steam. What she was greeted by was a heavily damaged scorched training field. Where is he? She thought before familiar shrill shrieking noise could be heard from above. Glancing upwards Yusaka saw Naruto descending from the sky with a familiar chakra shuriken in hand with two clones by his side. I got you this time. Wind release. Rasen shuriken. Naruto declared before throwing his strongest jutsu at Yusaka. 
Raising a hand Yasaka focused her sights on the deadly chakra shuriken before narrowing her eyes. The Rasen shuriken gained a deep purple hue around it before it vanished from sight. Several seconds later a large explosion could be seen on the other side of the training field. This caught Naruto off guard. Wow how did you do that? Naruto spoke in a bewildered manner. I thought I told you that all masters of Senjutsu could master space and time manipulation. However very few have ever mastered time manipulation, but as you can see I have mastered space manipulation. Yusaka said with a calm expression. Wait so if I learn your variant of Senjutsu I can master space and time manipulation? Naruto questioned. Nodding her head. Indeed, you very well could Naruto-kun. Although it's not something simple you can learn such as magic, many have died trying to master these abilities. Because if you're not careful you could end up teleporting yourself and others into the dimensional gap. Yusaka explained wanting to make sure Naruto understood just how dangerous these abilities were. Naruto gained a grim expression. As I figured there always is a catcher risk to these abilities. Naruto sighed as he was starting to feel slight fatigue. Yusaka noticed this as she gave a small smile. I believe that will do for today you've improved greatly Naruto-kun. You're able to hold your own against me while I'm using 30% of my full power while in your base form. Tomorrow I will start you on the basics of learning Senjutsu, as well as continuing where we left off on your Yujutsu. Yusaka said as she noticed the look of despair on Naruto's face. There's no need to be upset. Although I've never seen anyone with such poor skill for Yujutsu in my life. Even my Kunu has greater control over her Yujutsu than you do, and she's only 6 years old. Yusaka said in a slight mocking tone. Naruto for his part felt like crying it wasn't his fault he sucked at illusions and spellcasting. Then something hit Naruto. Wait what was that Yujutsu you used earlier? Yusaka glanced at Naruto for a second. Oh, it was just a safety precaution in case you got a little wild. You know the mirages you love so M-U-C-H. Yusaka said in a sing-song voice causing Naruto to cry and I'm tears. Giggling to herself Yusaka began to leave the training field as she walked with a sexy sway in her hips. Naruto's eyes were glued to her large round and plump ass, he wanted to squeeze them in his hands. Man, she's so hot what? No bad Naruto. Get your mind out of the gutter. Naruto scolded himself before shaking any perverted thoughts from his head. Unknown to Naruto he didn't notice Yusaka glanced back at him with a smile, she knew he was staring at her, but she didn't really mind all that much. Naruto sat down on the damaged and heavily scorched ground. What's wrong with me Naruto thought. It's a common emotion called love kit. Naruto turned his attention to Yang Kurama walking towards him, who was closely followed by his other half. Even you can't be that dense not to see it. The yin half of Kurama interjected. Well Naruto has a knack for being as dense as a brick when it comes to the opposite sex. Naruto's eye twitched in annoyance. I'm not dense. Naruto yelled before calming down. Okay I might be a little dense, but it's not my fault, I grew up not knowing what love was. I didn't figure it out until my training trip with Jiraiya sensei Naruto said softly. Well what are you going to do about it? Because you have a hot kitsune milf who is practically asking for it. Yang Kurama said with a smirk. Do you have no shame? No, not really. Both halves of the same entity said in unison, causing the young Yuzumaki to deadpan. Look she already said she's not interested in a relationship with anyone. I don't want to ruin this friendship that I have with her. Yes, I do have feelings for her. It's not like some simple crush I don't know how to explain it. Naruto said softly before standing up. Taking a deep breath Naruto began to walk back towards the Imperial Palace, leaving the two halves of Kurama to sit there in silence. Well I wasn't expecting that. Yin Kurama thought aloud as his other half nodded in agreement. As the two chibi-tailed beasts followed their host leaving the training field completely empty. It was a warm night, there wasn't a cloud in the sky, and the moon was full, it was the perfect night. Naruto released a sigh as he sank into the water of the hot springs it was relaxing. The water was much too hot for an average human, but Naruto was anything but normal, as he had an immunity to heat and fire, thanks to Kurama. The water was almost soothing as Naruto had no doubt he could quite possibly fall asleep in here. However, this pleasant experience was broken when he heard someone enter the hot springs through the sliding door. Glancing up Naruto was surprised at who he saw in front of him. It was Inukimi, she had her hair done up in a bun while wearing a flimsy towel that showed off her curvy figure, and what she lacked in the boob department she made up for in her hips and ass. Feeling his cheeks heat up Naruto quickly averted his eyes from the beautiful Inugami. The current leader of the Inugami glanced at Naruto for a second before making her way into the hot springs. Yuzumaki Sen you seem surprised to see me here. I'm sure you can't be that simple-minded to not know that our hot springs are cosex. She explained without an ounce of sympathy in her voice. Naruto opened his mouth, but no words could come out, so he closed his mouth to prevent himself from embarrassing himself any further. 
Naruto watched Inyakimi through his peripheral vision as she made her way to the other side of the hot springs before kneeling in the water. Leaning her back up against the stone wall, she released a sigh of content. Naruto finally managed to calm his nerves closing his eyes before leaning back. He wouldn't admit it, but Inyakimi was almost as beautiful and sexy as Yusaka, quickly shaking his head. What's wrong with me? Naruto thought to himself. You're starting to form a harem we're so proud of you. Both halves of the same entity set in unison, causing the young Uzumaki to deadpan. Naruto twitched the only people who would ever be proud of him for forming a harem would be Kakashi and Jiraiya. It hurt, it truly hurt thinking about them, the fact that he would never see any of his friends ever again. Finally calming his nerves Naruto tried to relax, although it didn't last too long as he heard the sliding door to the hot springs open again. Cracking open an eye Naruto had to bite the inside of his mouth to prevent himself from gasping from what stood before him. His cheeks were dusted red as he saw Yusaka wearing a very flimsy towel that was tightly hugging her busty figure. So here you are Naruto-kun. Yusaka said as she made her way over to the younger blonde before sitting next to him. Here's your chance Naruto mate with her. Yang Kurama commanded which nearly caused Naruto to choke on his spit. Gah. What the hell is wrong with you? Don't you have somewhere else to be perverted? Naruto retorted. Not until tomorrow. Yin Kurama responded with the smartest remark. Off in the corner of the hot springs Inyakimi was glaring daggers at Yusaka. She didn't understand it why she was feeling this way, she didn't want Yusaka anywhere near Naruto. Could it be? Could it be possible that she was jealous over a human child? Preposterous she was one of the most powerful Inyagami to ever exist, with the exception of her late mate and son. There was no way she would give birth to a half-breed like her stepson in Ayasha. Naruto-kun. Blue eyes turned to meet golden yellow ones. The beautiful nine-tailed Kitsune smiled, ever pleasant and soothing. Would it be okay if I washed your back for you, hmm? Naruto froze, his brain was unresponsive thanks to the offer that was just placed on the table. His mind simply couldn't comprehend it for a few seconds. Isaka simply suppressed a giggle at the unresponsive teen before gently grabbing his arm and guiding him out of the hot springs. She brought him to a small stool before gently pushing him onto the stool. Kneeling behind him and grabbing the already full bucket there. And Yukimi's hand twitched ever so slightly she would not give in to these temptations. She came here to relax not to be seduced by a 17-year-old boy. Naruto shivered when he felt the beautiful vixen's hand glide across his back, following the crevices made by his shoulder blades, and slowly moving downwards to his waist. Your back is very strong I must say Naruto-kun he heard her mumble softly, taking her hand off of him to grab something else. The poor shinobi was unable to respond, as he was too busy trying to stop his blood from rushing to his second head. And he wasn't prepared for what came next, Yusaka's hands returned with a vengeance however, this time wielding a sponge, using it to slide up and down his back. The slight friction that the sponge caused by sliding against him felt quite soothing to the somewhat on edge blonde, making the entire experience begin to feel like a massage. About the same time, she started washing his back, she also started humming a soothing tune, one that also helped ease his senses. Altogether, slowly but surely, the teen's eyes began to droop faintly, as all the tension that had built up slowly left his body, released in an undercurrent of contentment. He desperately tried to stay awake, but he was on cloud nine, as Yusaka slowly slid the sponge around his back. Unbeknownst to Yusaka the other occupant in the hot springs was making her way towards her. Feeling a delicate finger touch her shoulder Yusaka stopped her actions before turning around and coming face to face with Inyakimi. Inyakimi san what a pleasant surprise. When did you get here? Inyakimi fraught the urge to deadpan as she glared at Yusaka. For your information Yusaka san I've been here the entire time. Yusaka was taken back by the hostility in the Inugami's voice. Did I do something to offend you? As a matter of fact, you did. I know what you're doing, and I won't stand for it anymore. For her part Yusaka was confused she had no idea what Inukimi was talking about. What do you mean I haven't done anything to offend you? Inukimi growled in response. Yes, you do. It all started a couple days ago with the Baldosan incident. You lied to us you do harbor feelings for this boy don't you, and now you're trying to drag me into it. For her part, Yasaka tried her best to logically reply. What? When did you come up with this crazy idea? I'll admit I might have a small crush on Naruto-kun, but it's not enough for me to act on. And why would I want to drag you into this, you haven't shown any interest in anyone in the past 200 years. Something snapped inside of Inyakimi. Very well then from this day forth you are my rival and I will have him. Inyakimi declared. Because if you don't bet him by the next full moon, which is roughly a month from now I will take him from you. Yusaka blushed crimson red after hearing this. We can't treat him as if he's a toy or object. Yusaka retorted as she felt a flicker of anger pulse through her. Yusaka stood to her feet glaring into Inukimi's eyes with a new ferocity in them. I won't let you destroy the relationship he's formed with my daughter. 
the vixen growled baring her fangs as her ears and tails appeared. So, you're using your daughter to get to him that's pretty low fox. Isaka's body was trembling with anger as flickers of blue flames danced around her fingers and hands. Watch yourself you bitch you're walking on thin ice now. Inukimi smirked as poison began dancing around her fingers and hands. Well then bring it on it's been a long time since I've actually had to try. The two stood there glaring into each other's eyes, as sparks of electricity can be seen from the intensity of their glare. However, Anwise broke their concentration. Turning their attention back to Naruto who was hunched forward on the stool, one could clearly hear him snoring lightly. I think you put him to sleep Yusaka-san. And Yukimi said as she poked the young blonde who fell forward before Yusaka caught him with several of her tails. I think we went a little too far in Yukimi-san. Yusaka said gently as she was thankful that Naruto was asleep during their argument. Inukimi glanced at the sleeping blonde before gently running her finger across his whisker cheek. The result caused the young blonde to purr much to the delight of the two supernatural women. Inukimi hesitantly nodded. Please forgive me for whatever I said to you earlier. The Inugami said blushing in embarrassment and refusing to meet Yusaka's gaze. It's been so long since I've been touched by a man, let alone felt this way. This boy has either a gift or a curse. She said softly as Yusaka tilted her head to the side. Gift or a curse. Would you care to elaborate on that, because I don't know if I can follow your logic on this? Yusaka asked as her tail slowly coiled around Naruto's body to hold him. Inukimi took a deep breath as she calmed her nerves as the blush on her cheeks faded. What I'm saying is this boy seems to have the ability to rekindle feelings that I have long since suppressed. I'm sure you feel it too, as you've already stated you have a small crush on him do you not? Yusaka nodded finally understanding where Inukimi was coming from. Yes, being around him makes me feel well makes me feel how I did when I first met, Yusaka paused as she scowled at the mere thought of that man who impregnated her. Inukimi like many other clan heads within Kyoto's walls, knew of Yusaka's former lover and Kunu's father. I didn't mean to bring up such terrible memories. But what that man did to you was not right, rather what he did to our faction isn't right. Inukimi said with a serious expression as Yusaka nodded. What I'm getting at is this boy rather Naruto-san may be able to help us in more than one way. Not just in our personal lives but for our faction as well. So, what are you suggesting that we share him? Yusaka asked raising an eyebrow in confusion. Inukimi seemed to smirk at Yusaka's retort. Possibly. But let's see how things play out, as you know as well as I do arrange marriages don't really work that well. It's one of the reasons why our predecessors are no longer among us anymore. The beautiful Inugami said softly before slowly walking back into the hot springs. Yusaka watched Inukimi for a moment before turning her attention back to Naruto as she gently set him down on the stone ground. Splash. Naruto gasped as he shot up his entire body was dripping as he was doused with a large amount of cold water. What? Who? How? Where? Naruto yelled in confusion as he was awoken from a dead sleep by a bucket of cold water. Standing over him was Yusaka as she had a smirk on her face at seeing Naruto's reaction. Welcome back to the land of the living Naruto-kun. Naruto turned his attention to Yusaka glaring at her. Why did you throw water on me? And what the hell happened? Naruto yelled gaining a snicker from the older blonde. Well while I was washing your back you fell asleep, so I decided to wake you up. Yusaka replied with a small smile that caused Naruto's eye to twitch. Releasing a small sigh of frustration Naruto got to his feet while stretching his limbs. Well thank you for washing my back Yusaka, I guess I'll see you later. Naruto said before heading towards the door. Oh Naruto-kun one more thing. Naruto turned around as Yusaka closed the distance in between them in the blink of an eye. What was all Naruto could say before Yusaka put her finger over his lips? There's one thing I need to tell you I won't be able to help you in your training tomorrow. But Inukimi-san has agreed to oversee your training tomorrow I hope you don't mind. Yusaka said as Naruto stood there trying to comprehend what he just heard. Inukimi for her part was taken back by Yusaka's action. While on the outside she seemed to be rather upset by this, but while on the inside she felt rather happy for some reason. When Naruto turned his gaze to the beautiful Inugami, Inukimi seemed to blush before turning her head to the side in a harsh manner before huffing. I understand Yusaka thanks for giving me the heads up. Naruto said in an almost depressed tone which caused Inukimi to frown. Don't sound so gloomy about it, Inukimi-san is a very kind person once you get to know her. I'm sure the two of you will be best friends in no time. Yusaka said with a smile before kissing Naruto on the cheek. Her actions caused the young Yuzumaki to freeze as he stood there almost like a statue giggling at his actions. He's far too easy to tease. Yusaka thought as she walked back into the hot springs. Don't get her wrong the kiss she just gave Naruto was genuine. But she didn't want to rush anything, plus she wanted to give Inukimi some time with Naruto before making her move. Finally snapping out of his funk Naruto sporting blush on his cheeks, brought his hand up to his face where Yusaka kissed him. 
Stuff like this never happened to me back in the elemental nations. Naruto thought before leaving the hot springs before anything else could happen to him. With Naruto gone Inukimi turned her gaze back to Yasaka. Why did you do that? Yasaka glanced at the Inugami. You deserve a chance to spend time with him as well. And I believe this would be the perfect opportunity for you to spend time with him. Plus, you have fully mastered both Sinjutsu and Yujutsu to a higher extent than me. And he's been having trouble learning how to wield Yujutsu. Isaka said with a smile before sinking into the water. And Yukimi stared down at the water for a second before responding. Thank you it was soft and most people wouldn't even be able to hear her response. But Yusaka heard her loud and clear as she smiled. You're most welcome in yukimi san Naruto was walking through the streets of Kyoto, glancing up at the full moon Naruto couldn't help but feel uncomfortable. Ever since his battle with the Ten Tails and Abido he's felt extremely uncomfortable at the sight of the full moon. As it reminded him of his greatest failure and the most dreadful technique he had ever heard of infinite Tsukiyomi. However much to his surprise both halves of Kurama were silent either they were asleep or they just had no reason to talk to him at the moment. Glancing down at his hands as he clenched them tightly, he would prepare for the worst as he was training under Inukimi for the time being. I can do this. Even Yasaka said she's a nice person once you get to know her. Naruto thought trying to ease his nerves. Unfortunately, Naruto was not paying attention to where he was going as he walked into someone or something. Snapping back into reality Naruto looked at what was in front of him. What stood in front of him was a man with light brown hair and dark green eyes, he was wearing a combination of a Japanese schoolboy's uniform, covered by what could possibly be ancient Japanese armor. Sorry I wasn't watching where I was going. Naruto apologized to the man standing in front of him who looked to be in his late twenties to early thirties. The man gave Naruto a gentle smile. No need to apologize. You seem to be lost in your thoughts so no reason to get upset. The man said with a smile, a smile that was all too familiar to Naruto. That smile is so fake. Naruto thought being the master of fake smiles himself. Deciding to play along Naruto decided to see if he could get any information from this man. So, what brings you to Kyoto if you don't mind me asking? Naruto asked as the man's smile seemed to disappear not completely though. I'm here to see an old friend. Now run along boy I have much to do. The man said before continuing on his way. My name is Naruto not boy. Naruto retorted before continuing on his way. Well Naruto-kun my name is Jin Valu it was nice meeting you. The man said before he continued walking away. Naruto be wary of that man. He's literally oozing negative emotions and intent. Yang Kurama spoke to his host in a serious manner as Naruto mentally nodded. Yeah I know. I think I should tell Yusaka about the guy something about him doesn't feel right. I felt a heavy presence around his body almost as if Naruto thought. He feels similar to a Jinch Kriki. So, he must be a sacred gear wielder. Yin Kurama advised as Naruto made his way back to the Imperial Palace as quickly as he could. Naruto quickly made his way through the streets of Kyoto as he ran down the alley that would lead him to the dimension of that house the Yaokai. He couldn't help but wonder who that man was Jin Valu, for some reason he could have sworn he heard that name once from one of the council members. Quickly shaking his head, he needed to notify Yasaka right away hopefully she wasn't still in the hot springs. Did calm down you're only going to drive yourself crazy if you keep on thinking about it. Slow down your pace you'll make it on time, I'm sure your vixen will hear you out. The yin half of Karama said in a somewhat bored tone. Well the yang half remained quiet as he didn't express his own thoughts on the matter. In his opinion they were unneeded, although unlike his other half, he was also worried about this individual Jin Baoyu. His presence it was heavy very heavy, far too heavy to be a simple item sealed within him. It felt Yang pondered for a moment. Naruto dropped from his full sprint to a rather fast walk. I know Karama I'm just worried. Something just doesn't feel right, ever since I met him something feels off in Kyoto. My instincts are screaming at me telling me that there's danger around every corner. Naruto replied before coming face to face with a familiar grey-haired man with yellow eyes. Well, well, well if it isn't Yusaka's boy T.O.Y. Jin snickered with an arrogant smirk spread across his face. Naruto paid the rage in no mind as he continued on his way. Boy. Brad I'm talking to you. Naruto continued to ignore the rage in leader he didn't have time to be dealing with this fool. However, Naruto quickly jumped back as a bolt of purplish blue lightning struck the ground in front of him. Naruto robotically turned his head towards Jin who was now glaring at him. How dare you ignore me you lowly human. I should reduce you to ash for such disrespect. Look Sparky I'm busy at the moment so can you go bother someone else. The Rajin's eye twitched in annoyance as his body began to discharge purplish blue electricity. I'm going to kill you slowly and painfully boy watch your tone. Naruto just obliterate this fool with a tailed beast ball. Yang Kurama advised his host while Naruto mentally shook his head. I can't do that Kurama you know that. 
Plus, I don't think Yasaka would appreciate it much if I killed a member of the Yaokai Council. Naruto replied getting a growl in response. Look whatever you have against me can we settle it at a later date I need to see Yasaka immediately. Naruto pleaded not wanting to get in a fight right now. Jin on the other hand took this as an even greater insult. How dare you how dare you brush me aside as if I'm nothing more than a lowly peasant. You will pay for your disrespect boy prepare to die. Jin roared before being struck in the back of the head by a flat end of a sword. Jin dropped to the ground unconscious. Glancing up Naruto did not recognize the person standing behind the Raijin, he was a handsome, tall and slender young man. He has fair skin with pointed ears, slanted golden eyes with slit pupils, and knee-length silver hair with short bangs. He has a purple crescent moon on his forehead that could be seen beneath his bangs, two magenta stripes on each cheek and a magenta stripe on each eyelid. Naruto Uzumaki my name is Sesameru son of Inukimi sama Why is it that you require an audience with Yasaka sama The Inugami asked in a polite tone. Naruto took a deep breath. I ran into a rather suspicious individual, ever since I met him nothing's felt right. My instincts are screaming at me telling me that there's danger all around us. Naruto explained as Sesameru nodded. Do you have a physical description or a name of this individual? I can only hope that this isn't anything serious. Well he was wearing some kind of weird uniform that was covered by some type of ancient armor. He had light brown hair and dark green eyes, and he looked to be in his late twenties to early thirties. As for his name it was Jin Baoyu. Naruto explained before he watched Sesameru's facial expression changed from neutral to a mix of anger and shock. What did you just say? Did you just say Jin Baoyu? Why yeah is everything alright did I do something wrong? Sesameru shook his head. No, you did nothing wrong. It's just that that despicable man Jin is a wanted man in both Takamagahara and Kyoto. If he's here, then we must make haste to Yasaka-sama immediately. Naruto nodded as he could hear the anger in the Inugami's voice, despite his rather neutral expression. Without warning Sesameru grabbed Naruto's shoulder before teleporting himself and Naruto to the Imperial Palace. Kurikiz was smoking his pipe while he was looking through multiple documents. Before he felt a slight chill in the air something was wrong. Hum something is off he muttered before placing the documents down on his desk before walking towards the window. With a gentle push he opened his window before glancing out over the city of Kyoto, narrowing his yellow eyes. Gurukiz was brought out of his trance as he heard a knock on the door. Turning around and walking over to the door before opening it, he came face to face with Naruto and Sesameru. Raising an eyebrow, the old Karasu Tengu raised an eyebrow as he noticed the concerned look on Naruto's face and the mixture of anger and worry on Sesameru. What brings the two of you here so late at night? Kurikiz sama this is urgent we have a big problem now. Sesameru spoke in a tone that left no room for argument. Oh, and what might that be? Naruto claims that he ran into Jin value moments before meeting me. Sesameru said leaving out the part about Jin. A dark blue aura began to admit from Kurikiz as he gritted his teeth and tightly clenching his fists. This has to be some kind of joke. This is not funny. Kurikiz growled, and yet Naruto and Sesameru both stood their ground neither one budging. I know what I saw he had dark green eyes and light brown hair. And after I ran into him I felt unsafe almost as if dangerous around every corner. Naruto said in a serious but worried tone. Kurikaz's eyes widened slightly. You're serious you actually saw him. Naruto nodded wondering what the Karasu Tengu would do next. So, the bastard has returned after five years to finish what he attempted to Kurikaz thought aloud before turning his gaze back to Naruto. We must find Yasaka Haim immediately. We already looked for her, but we couldn't find her. Naruto blushed slightly. She might still be in the hot springs within Yukimi-san. Naruto said before Sesameru glanced at him with a slightly annoyed look. And you didn't think to tell me that before? Sesameru asked. I thought they would be done by now. Gurukiz just shook his head. We'll just have to go to the hot springs and find her. There is no use in arguing amongst ourselves at this point. I can only imagine how Yasaka Haim will react to this news, she's been so much happier since you arrived here Naruto my boy. I dare say she might have a thing for younger men. Kuroka said before chuckling at Naruto's expression. Sesameru just sighed as he began to lose his patience. Then let's go find Yasaka-sama and Hahu then. He suggested. Even after all this time you still refer to me that way Ses-chan. A familiar voice made itself known from behind Naruto and Sesameru. The trio turned around and came face to face with Inukimi was wearing a silk robe instead of her usual kimono and outer wrap. Hahu when did you get here? Sesameru said in a slightly surprised tone. Long enough to hear that Jin Valu is somewhere in Kyoto's walls, she growled. You know when Yasaka-san hears this she's going to lose it. Finally, curiosity got the better of Naruto. Just who is Jin Valu anyways? I understand that he's a fugitive, but what did he do? Naruto asked. Kurikiz was the first to speak up. 
You didn't hear this from me, but he was Yusaka's former lover and Kunu's father, if you want to hear the full story you must ask Yusaka herself, but I wouldn't get my hopes up she probably won't tell you. Kurik is explained. Naruto went silent as he seemed to be deep in thought. What did he do to hurt Yusaka so badly that she would lose it by just mentioning this man's name? Naruto pondered before Inukimi began to speak. Then I suggest we find Yusaka-san and Kunu as fast as possible before. Uam. The powerful explosion shook the entire Imperial Palace. Ugh. What was that? Naruto yelled as he managed to regain his balance. We may be too late let's hurry. Sesameru advised before teleporting them all to the throne room. Naruto, Sesameru, Inukimi and Kurikas all appeared in the throne room or what was left of it, there was a gigantic hole in the wall leading out towards the courtyard. Broken chairs and debris littered the ground, while a thick smoke threatened to choke anyone who dared to enter. Clapping his hands together Naruto unleashed a powerful burst of wind chakra blowing away the smoke. What happened here? Naruto asked obviously confused. Inukimi closed her eyes for a second tapping into her senjutsu. Yusaka san she's in the courtyard the female Inugami said in a worried tone before running towards the hole in the wall. However, a large individual appeared in front of her, it looked like a giant humanoid being made completely out of stone. It brought its massive fist down towards Inukimi. Narrowing her eyes and unleashing a massive burst of spiritual power, Inukimi obliterated the upper half of the giant stone golem. However, its body began to regenerate almost immediately. Lightning release. False darkness. A laser-like spear of lightning destroying the rest of the earth golem. Pale blue lightning could be seen dancing around Naruto's mouth. Like you said we have no time to waste let's go. Naruto dashed towards the opening in the wall. Landing out in the courtyard he narrowly got hit by a blast of fox fire. What the hell? Naruto looked up as his eyes widened in shock. No. Standing before him was Jin the man he ran into earlier holding Yasaka by the neck, blood was seeping out of her mouth. And in his extended hand was an orb of ghostly blue flames. Yusaka let her go. Naruto yelled as he ran towards Jin who threw her at him. Opening his arms Naruto caught Yusaka as he was sent skidding back several feet. What did you do to her? Answer me. Jin tilted his head to the side in a sinister manner. Paying back this bitch for interrupting my work five years ago. He simply answered before grabbing something off the ground. It was Kunu her hands were tied together as well as being gagged. She had tears in her eyes and was struggling to free herself. I'm going to finish what I attempted five years ago. So, don't interfere because if you do I will kill you. The father of Kunu said in a sinister manner. Jin Valryu. You will return Kunu Haim this instant. Kurik is roared with anger while pointing his shakaj at Jin. Jin grabbed the hilt of his katana which was stabbed into the ground before pulling it out. Oh, really and how are you going to make me do that you pathetic weakling? Aim no Murakumo no Tsurugi it can't be. How did you get that? Inukimi snarled. Oh, this little doohickey here. Quite simple I stole it. Jin said with a grin as he blocked Sesameru's sword effortlessly with the aim no Murakumo no Tsurugi. It seems even your legendary blade Bakusego legendary Gaokai created from your own being is nothing compared to this holy sword. Sesameru growled and was about to release a wave of destructive power, but remembered that this man was holding Kunu. You're a damned coward let her go and fight me. Now why would I do that? It's more fun this way. Jin spoke in a sinister tone. What is that sword? Naruto asked while watching Jin toying with Sesameru. Aim no Murakumo no Tsurugi also known as the Sword of the Gathering Clouds of Heaven, it's a holy sword of Shinto legends that rivals the original Excalibur and Durandal. Kurik is explained while not turning his gaze away from Jin. Naruto turned his attention back to Yusaka who had seen better days. Kurama I need you to give me some of your chakra, I need to heal her. Naruto asked well more like pleaded. Here you go kid save your vixen and kill that bastard. Yang Kurama declared. Don't worry I intend to. Naruto retorted softly as his left hand was cloaked in a shroud of golden yellow chakra. However, his hand began to change looking more like it was completely made out of chakra rather than being cloaked in it. Quickly shaking off his surprise Naruto placed his hand on Yusaka's chest avoiding her as he funneled Kurama's chakra into her using it to heal her body. All the wounds on her body began closing almost instantly as she released a small groan. Naruto gave a small sigh as he allowed a small smile to appear Yasaka was coming to, pulling his hand away from Yasaka, all of her wounds were gone. Glancing at his newly transformed hand it felt different much more powerful, closing his eyes Naruto began to draw on nature energy. Sesameru tried attacking Jin from multiple angles, and yet this insufferable man blocked all of them almost effortlessly. Kurik is attacked from the left only to get blasted away by a blast of icy wind before coming face to face, with a humanoid being me out of compressed air and wind. Then Yukimi was fighting another earth golem, and there were dozens upon dozens of humanoid beings made out of different elements, earth, fire, lightning, water and wind. 
orange pigment formed around Naruto's eyes as he revealed his new yellow toad-like eyes. These things they're completely made from their respected elements. Their signatures are similar to Jin's. His sacred gear must give him the ability to summon elemental beings. Naruto thought while narrowing his eyes. Kicking off from the ground Naruto launched himself at Jin. Jin for his part turned around at the last second with a look of surprise on his face as Naruto's fist was mere inches away from him. The amount of force behind one of Naruto's Senjutsu enhanced punches would be enough to kill most weaker high-class devils with a single punch. Quickly acting Naruto grabbed a hold of Kunu as the force of his punch sent Yasaka's former lover flying away like a ragdoll. Naruto quickly cut the rope tied around Kunu's hands with his wind chakra as he removed the gag from her mouth as well. Kunu-chan are you alright? Naruto asked and instead of answering him Kunu hugged him tightly. Ani-sama. Ani-sama. Kunu cried into Naruto's kimono. Sesameru could only stare at Naruto in amazement. How did you manage to hit him? He was able to block every one of my strikes. Naruto answered the Inugami without even glancing at him. It wasn't difficult for me to figure out that you are holding back. Since you didn't want to injure Kunu-chan and how I hit him. Well I caught him off guard that's how, he won't be down for long. Naruto said as he picked up Kunu who refused to let go of him. Walking over to Yusaka who was still unconscious Naruto set Kunu down next to her mother. Hahu. Hahu it's me Kunu. The little girl cried and Yusaka didn't respond. Kunu-chan she should be up soon. Naruto said before creating several shadow clones to guard both Kunu and Yusaka. Kunu nodded slightly while clinging to her mother as Naruto made his way back over to Sesameru who annihilated several elemental golems. Naruto glanced at the sky there wasn't a cloud to be seen. Quickly making a tiger seal Naruto inhaled deeply before infusing Matatabi's chakra into his lungs and stomach. Sage art. Blue raging dragon flame bullet. Naruto unleashed several massive black and blue fireballs in the shape of dragon heads. Kurakiz could only glance at Naruto in confusion as he launched several large fireballs into the sky. What in the world is he doing? The old Karasu Tengu thought while trying to cause permanent damage to the wind golem. Dodging powerful waves of wind Kurikas unleashed a blast of spiritual power from his Shakijim, which obliterated half of the golem's body. But due to this golem being completely comprised of wind its body easily regenerated. Gritting his teeth Kurikas began to retreat as a fire golem joined the wind golem. Is there any way to permanently destroy these things? Jin's sacred gear was nowhere near this strong the last time I saw him, it didn't even have the ability to spawn these things either. He thought as he felt something hit his wrist. Taking a closer look, he noticed it was starting to rain, as he could hear the rumble of thunder in the clouds above. And Yukimi frowned as it went from sprinkling to downpouring. You have to be kidding me how could it start raining when there wasn't even a cloud in the sky. She thought before glancing at Naruto who had pale blue lightning dancing around his hand. Wait rain. Don't tell me his earlier fire-based technique I see now he heated up the atmosphere, but what is he planning to do? She thought as she noticed the fire golem in front of her was beginning to fall apart from the rain. Sesameru being the closest one to Naruto took it upon himself to guard the young Uzumaki. As he could tell Naruto was planning something big and judging by the massive amount of power building up in the atmosphere he was planning on wiping all these things out in one go. Are you ready yet Naruto-san? Wordlessly Naruto nodded before raising his hand into the air. Yes, I'm ready. Naruto said quietly before taking a deep breath. Everyone steer clear. Naruto howled gaining the attention of everyone as he sent a bolt of lightning up into the air. The result caused a massive discharge of lightning as it came screaming down from the sky, striking in random positions. Gurukas watched all of the lightning and the sky gathering together into one point. What is this? I've never seen such a lightning technique like this even Jin has never displayed such control. Sesameru remained quiet as he glanced up at the sky, but if one looks closely they could see that he was quite impressed by this display of power. There's way too much power in the atmosphere we're all going to get caught up in the blast. Inyakimi said with a nervous expression. Whatever he's planning it's not only going to annihilate all of those elemental creatures but us as well. Gurukiz tapped his shakajim against the ground, creating a barrier not only around him and the Inugami mother and son duo, as well as Yusaka and Kunu, and also the entire imperial palace. Naruto clenched his fist tightly as it began to glow a pale blue. A massive roar could be heard from the sky, the roar was so loud that it could be heard for miles away. However, what emerged from the clouds was a spectacle to behold a massive dragon-like beast completely made out of compacted lightning appeared. This jutsu is called Kirin. Now disappear after the thunderclap. Naruto yelled before bringing his hand down. The lightning beast rose back up into the clouds before coming down with such speed and ferocity that upon hitting the ground the explosion shook the entire city of Kyoto. The explosion comparable to that of several nuclear warheads going off at once. The attack only lasted an instant, but the payoff was well worth it. 
Isaka, who had regained consciousness prior to Naruto unleashing Kirin, was left astounded by the power of this technique. It was even stronger than his Rasen Shuriken, but it didn't take a genius to figure out why he didn't use it. The amount of time it took to prepare this technique made it nearly impossible to use in a battle, but since their enemies were mindless elemental thralls, it was rather easy to prepare and attack them with it. The dust began to clear as the once beautiful forest and area was now wasteland, Naruto was no longer in sage mode as he put every ounce of his power into Kirin. Leaning forward slightly Naruto was breathing heavily he was drenched in sweat. Kurikas released the barriers that he had created and could only watch in astonishment at what Naruto is capable of doing. Such destructive power. Do you think he actually did it? Inukimi thought aloud. Isaka stood up as Kunu was tightly holding on to her mother's kimono. Hahu is that bad man gone? Yusaka glanced down at her daughter as much as she wanted to say yes, she remained silent as she gently rubbed her daughter's head. Let's hope so she whispered. Haha that should have finished it. Naruto chuckled softly as he glanced up and noticed all of the elemental beings were gone. That's wishful thinking boy, but did you really think such a pitiful technique would end me? Naruto's eyes widened in horror as he watched Jin pull himself out of the rubble. Sure, his body was damaged and mangled, but it began to repair itself almost instantly. The man had a despicable smirk on his face as all of the damage Naruto had done vanished. Then no, that's impossible you should be dead. Jin snickered at Naruto's expression. Well I will admit it, if you would have hit me with that attack before I modified my body, I would most certainly be dead right now. But too bad for you. The man said before shrugging his shoulders and chuckling. However, I am impressed you managed to destroy all of my elemental thralls with that one technique, but it seems it's only good for one shot. Sesameru grabbed Naruto's shoulder and wordlessly refilling his chakra and spiritual power. Jin began to slowly walk towards Naruto, Sesameru rushed forward swinging back Yusega at Jin's neck. However, before the legendary blade could make contact Sesameru was blasted back by a large amount of air pressure. I thought you would have known by now that my sacred gear elemental force grants me the ability to manipulate all five elements. So not only can I manipulate all five elements on their own, but after countless training, I can now form them into the elemental thralls or golems. Jin said with a chuckle as he snapped his fingers summoning countless elemental thralls around him. And the best part is I haven't even used my balance breaker yet. Jin chuckled sinisterly. Anyways I may have to use it if I want to collect what is rightfully mine. He said while glancing at Kunu who hid behind her mother. Isaka gritted her teeth. I won't hand over my daughter to you, you sick-minded bastard. She growled as she unconsciously released fox fire from her mouth and hands. Jin's smirk dropped before he bursted into a fit of laughter. So, you haven't told her, have you? Well I guess I can clear this little bit of confusion up then. Isaka unleashed a torrent of fox fire at Jin who extinguished it with a mixture of wind and water. Now, now, now you chan that's not polite. Whatever happened to the lovesick girl that I used to know, and Jin said in a low dovey tone which caused Yasaka to growl. You tried to kill her when you tried to absorb my daughter after you stole and modified the Benihisago. Yasaka roared showing her anger. You make it sound so bad I simply want her to be closer to me. So that we may become one, and the best way to do that was to modify the Crimson Gourd, which originally belonged to the Golden Horned King and the Silver Horned King. I don't understand why the Shinto gods are so pissed off at me for taking something that didn't belong to them in the first place. Yes, I modified the gourd to not only absorb those who get sucked into it, but they become part of me instead of being trapped in an alternate dimension. Jin said in a calm manner. Your sick Yusaka responded with a look of horror. How many how many yaokai have you absorbed? Answer me Jin didn't answer instead his body began to morph taking on the form of something that should not exist. The thing that took his place had a humanoid body, it had four pairs of wings, each pair belonging to a different race, angel, devil, dragon and fallen angel. It had scaly grey skin, with patches of multicolored fur scattered all over its body, and it also had horns which grew out from the top of his head. His face was still humanoid mostly with the exception of his eyes being completely solid crimson with black pupils. If you're really curious about how many beings I have absorbed into my body, the current number is eight. And my dear daughter Kunu will be number nine. Jin said as he stretched his body out allowing his new appendages to move and to let the blood flow through them. Kunu froze after hearing those words this this thing was her father. But her mother told her that her father died long ago. No, you can't be my Chichiyu. Hahu said that he died protecting me. Kunu cried as tears began to form in her eyes. Jin for his part didn't show any reaction to his daughter or her reaction, he simply smiled in a sinister way. Well your mother lied to you because she was afraid you would come and look for me. Oh well no need to worry daddy is here now. Jin held his arms out as though anticipating a warm embrace. 
Sesameru tightly gripped his blade, Kurikas readied himself while pointing his shakajim at the elemental thralls, and Yukimi was ready to enter into her yaokai form. That's not going to happen Naruto growled. Oh, this is interesting it seems you've replaced Miya-chan. Jin in a mocking tone filled with sarcasm. Well it doesn't matter you can have him you were nothing more than a tool to gain what I wanted. Hearing this caused Yusaka to stop dead in her tracks did she just hear him right? Did he just say she was nothing more than a tool? That bastard I loved him Yusaka was lost in her thoughts. Jin's once cheerful expression changed to a serious one as he held out his hand, calling forth the aim no Murakumo no Tsurugi. It's time for me to collect my daughter Jin said before he began to leak out aura, a tremendous amount of it at that which far exceeded Yusaka, Sesameru and Inukimi. I'll admit last time, you all had the distinct advantage over me, but now after absorbing a dragon, an angel, three aokai, one fallen angel and three devils I would say right now, I believe that my power would not lose out to even Tiamat the Chaos Karma Dragon, the strongest out of the five great dragon kings, said to have power comparable to that of a Satan class devil. All of the Yaokai looked utterly horrified at this resolution. Of course, I'm not foolish enough to challenge one of the four great Satans. Especially Serzichas and Ajuka who have been said to have reached the same level as the heavenly dragons in their primes separately of course. But I believe I'm more than a match for you lot, and with the aid of my elemental thralls, you don't stand a chance. Jin said before vanishing in a burst of speed. Naruto quickly entered nine-tailed chakra mode and intercepted Jin mere inches away from Yasaka. Summoning forth nine chakra arms to restrain the deformed body of Jin who was slightly surprised. You've got an interesting power in you boy there's no doubt in my mind you're stronger than anyone else here without including myself, but you're in my way. Jin said before shredding Naruto's chakra arms with the aim no Murakumo no Tsurugi. This took Naruto by surprise before he was bombarded by blasts of elemental power from the elemental thralls. Damn it no. Naruto cursed as he sent out chakra arms wielding Rasengans at the elemental thralls. Jin gestured for the rest of his elemental thralls to attack everyone as he advanced towards Yusaka before throwing her out of the way. Kunu was terrified as this abomination grabbed her. I won't let you take my daughter. Yusaka roared as she charged at her former lover who pointed his holy sword at her. Unleashing a massive blast of divine energy at the yaokai leader, Yusaka was sent hurling across the ground as Naruto caught her. Quickly sending out a chakra arm Naruto tried to grab Jin, but he teleported away. Nuo. My Kunu. Naruto turned his attention to the crying vixen in his grasp as he grabbed both of her shoulders. Yusaka I'm going to get Kunu back I promise you that. Naruto said as Yusaka gripped him tightly not wanting to let him go. Just come back alive she said in between sniffles. Naruto shook his head. I don't know if I can keep that promise because I have a feeling one of us is going to die. Naruto said with a serious expression on his face as he watched her eyes widen in horror. Yusaka's lips trembled and before she could even utter a word Naruto did the balsiest thing he's ever done. Naruto quickly leaned forward as he claimed Yusaka's lips if he was gonna die he at least wanted to kiss her just once. Sesameru for his part could only shake his head despite the seriousness of the situation. We don't have time for this. He growled softly while Kurikas nodded in agreement. Inukimi simply frowned, but she accepted it. Naruto pulled back as he turned around and ran in the other direction before disappearing in a golden yellow flash. Leaving Yusaka standing there not knowing what just happened she unconsciously licked her lips. Raymond, she whispered. A moment later several platoons of yaokai guards and Shinto priests arrived on the area with Jin and the other members of the yaokai as well to deal with the ever-growing threat of the elemental thralls. Isaka closed her eyes as she took a deep breath putting her faith in Naruto. Deep down inside she knew he would win and save her daughter, but she couldn't help but worry about Naruto's safety. Brushing her personal worries aside, she opened her eyes as they seemed to glow a bright golden yellow, showing her determination to win. Let's cut down his elemental thralls as quickly as possible. Yusaka declared as she along with the yaokai leaders all charged forward, with the countless guards and priests following behind. The battle ensued as countless spells, senjutsu abilities and yujutsu abilities were cast upon the elemental thralls. The elemental thralls retorted by bombarding the yaokai and priests with their elemental powers. Yin appeared just outside the boundaries of Kyoto, there was a cross placed in front of the Benihisago otherwise known as Crimson Gourd. Kunu struggled in her father's grasp, ignoring her thrashing he tied her to the cross. You look so much like your mother, too bad this is where you say goodbye to your world forever. He said while holding her chin. Let me go you monster. Jin chuckled as he picked up the crimson gourd and aimed it at her. Don't worry soon everything will become clear to you. Welcome HOME Jin spoke in an insane manner as the gourd created a great suction force. Kunu could feel the pull that the gourd was causing as she struggled, but there was no use, she couldn't escape she was going to become part of this monster. The Kakakakea. Yes, so close now you are mine. 
Jin laughed as Kunu's body began to stretch out and move towards the narrow opening of the gourd. Nu. Please stop. Kunu's cries were ignored as her feet were centimeters away from the narrow opening of the gourd before something crashed into Jin. This not only disrupted the ritual, but also sent the gourd flying Jin was sent skidding back several feet. Narrowing his eyes as he gritted his teeth at what disturbed him he was greeted by Naruto Uzumaki in his nine tail chakra mode. Sorry I'm late. Naruto said with a cheeky grin as he made an all too familiar cross hand seal. You're going to pay for what you just tried to do to Kunu-chan. Naruto said as the deformed body of Jin glared daggers at him. You're going to pay for that boy very much so. Naruto stood across from Jin who looked ready to attack at any moment with his aim no Murakumo no Tsurugi in hand. Shadow clone jutsu. Naruto declared as the entire area was filled with explosions of white smoke before revealing an entire army of golden yellow Naruto's ready to fight. Jin was actually taken back by this as he summoned ten elemental thralls around him, two of each element to be so precise. Just because you can create illusions of yourself doesn't mean a thing to me. Naruto raised an eyebrow as he cocked his head to the side. Illusions. These are real solid clones they're almost as strong as myself. And we're going to beat you from here to kingdom come. Naruto yelled as he charged forward with his clone army following him. Naruto jumped over the elemental thralls as he created a Rasengan in each hand. Rasengan Barrage. Jin narrowed his eyes as he extended his hand creating multiple defensive magic circles. As Naruto clashed with the magical circles a grin appeared on his face which caught Jin's attention as his eyes widened as several clones bursted out of the ground. The clones quickly latched onto the deformed man as the army of clones surrounded him coming in for the kill. Gritting his teeth and anger Jin extended his wings and with a powerful flap he took to the air with the clones still attached to him. Get off me you annoying pests. The clones grinned. I hope you enjoy explosions. Boom. The clone said before exploding. Ah. Naruto grinned as he heard a yelp of pain coming from the deformed man. Looks like my shadow clone explosion jutsu did some damage. Naruto thought with glee as he saw Jin floating in the air covered in wounds. You damn brat. You think you're so great with your little ninja tricks. I'll show you what I'm truly capable of. Jin roared as he dive bombed towards Naruto. Naruto grinned as all of his clones began weaving different hand seals. Then allow me to retort. Take this elemental barrage jutsu. Naruto's clones all expel different elemental ninjutsu at Jin who seemed to grin. You fool. What happened next took Naruto completely by surprise his new finishing move elemental barrage, all of those elemental attacks stopped dead in their tracks. Wow how the hell did you do that? Naruto demanded as Jin chuckled in response. I can understand you've never seen my sacred gear elemental force. But I'll explain it to you, it allows me to control any and every elemental force, no matter how was created. So, whether it's natural or artificial I can control it, so which means you have to defeat me by either bombarding me with pure energy and destructive force or beat me into submission with physical strength. Jin explained as Naruto's eyes widened. So that's how he was able to attack me with Yasaka's fox fire. This means I have to stick with shadow clones, my Rasengan and magic. Naruto thought with a sour expression. But the single movement of his finger Jin sent Naruto's elemental barrage hurling back at him and his clones. Naruto got into a defensive position as one of his clones grabbed him and threw him out of the way as the bombardment of earth, fire, lightning, water and wind ninjutsu barrage came crashing down into the earth. Jin signaled for his elemental thralls to move in and annihilate Naruto and his remaining clones. Naruto landed gracefully on the ground as he growled as half of his clones were obliterated. Damn you. He growled before turning his attention to his remaining clones. Deal with these elemental things I'll take care of him. Naruto ordered as his clones wordlessly nodded before charging at the advancing elemental thralls. Jin stared down at Naruto with a smile, it wasn't a friendly smile it was a sinister one. Oh, so you're really going to take on little old me? The deformed man chuckled as his body finished healing itself. Well come at me then if you're not too scared. Naruto jumped high into the air before extending his hand, releasing nine chakra hands each one with a Rasengan on the end of it. Take this. Race and rampage. Jin avoided the deadly spheres attached to the chakra arms. With his aim no Murakumo no Tsurugi poise ready to impale Naruto. Naruto intercepted the blade by catching it with an additional chakra arm before ripping it from Jin's grasp. Naruto pulling his other arm back allowing his race and rampage to finally hit their target. Arg. Sending out another chakra arms Naruto grabbed hold of the deformed man before throwing him to the ground. Sprouting four more chakra arms and bringing their hands together Naruto formed a massive Rasengan. Race and absorption driving the massive sphere into Jin driving the man deep into the earth. Naruto was far from done he grabbed Jin's foot before ripping him from the earth and throwing him into the air. 
Jumping into the air Naruto created a large Rasengan in his hand, which was then surrounded by three regular-sized Rasengan, in a similar manner to moons around a planet. This will finish it. Planetary Rasengan. Naruto screamed before slamming it into Jin's stomach, causing the man to gasp in pain. The planetary Rasengan deeply embedded in Jin caused disordered rotation of the individual Rasengan, created by the central and smaller ones spinning in different directions, interacting with each other to form a massive and turbulent wave-like vortex. Jin was sent rocketing backwards spinning mind you as he crashed into the ground hard. Naruto landed on the ground less than graceful as he wiped some sweat off his brow. Naruto glanced at the rubble where Jin was before turning his attention back to his clones, who were finishing off the elemental thralls. Taking a deep breath Naruto began to advance towards Kunu, he needed to get her out of here now. He knew Jin wouldn't stay down for long as the bastard was way too persistent. The sound of rubble moving caused Naruto to freeze as he turned around and saw the mangled body of Jin pulling itself out of the rubble. It released a raspy noise as his body began to repair itself again, which took a matter of seconds before he stood at his full height. Glaring at the young Uzumaki in front of him. You boy are a real pain in the ass. Never in my life have I ever hated something as much as I hate you right now. You're like a damn mosquito no matter how hard I smack you, somehow some way you get right back up. Jin growled. I could say the same to you. Naruto retorted as he charged at Jin before jumping into the air and spreading his arms out. Naruto created nearly a dozen magic circles, within seconds Naruto unleashed a barrage of energy bullets made out of spiritual power. I won't let you have Kunu-chan you sick bastard. Naruto roared as the bombardment of energy bullets came raining down. Jin avoided the magic bullets before taking flight as he flew towards Naruto with the intent of ending the blonde's life. Cocking his fist back as it was cloaked in a mixture of fire, lightning and wind. Now die already. Naruto managed to avoid the elemental enhanced fist before delivering a chakra enhanced punch of his own. Jin coughed up a mouthful of blood as Naruto rammed his fist deep into the deformed man's stomach. Growling in response Jin kicked Naruto to the ground, Naruto quickly caught himself landing on his feet as his eyes widened. Naruto jumped back as the deformed man came screaming out of the sky like a comet with his fist poised to crush Naruto. Jin hit the ground with the force of a meteor strike shaking the area. Naruto sent out four chakra arms, each one grabbing one of Jin's limbs before lifting him off the ground. Naruto jumped forward before unleashing a Hail Mary of punches and kicks on Jin's body. Jin was unable to defend himself for the moment as he took punch after punch, kick after kick. Gritting his teeth and anger with a twitch of his hand, Jin accessed the telekinetic control he had over the aim no Murakumo no Tsurugi. Using the legendary Shinto blade to cut Naruto's chakra arms to shreds, quickly jumping back Naruto avoided being decapitated by the sword. Jin leaned forward as he popped his jaw back into place before spitting out a broken tooth and a glob of blood. Now you've got my blood boiling kid. I must say you're even stronger than that brat cow cow, the boy has potential far beyond even you. But at his current level, he wouldn't even be able to defeat a high class devil. But he is my apprentice after all, and one day he will be able to lead the hero faction to greatness. So, you brainwash some kid into following in your footsteps. Man, you really are sick. What the hell is wrong with you? Jin for his part glared at Naruto. I don't expect you to understand Naruto, you're human you should be siding with me not with those disgusting yaokai. It makes my skin crawl that I even impregnated that damn vixen Yasaka. But it was all for my plan to become a weapon that could strike fear in the supernatural world and let them know that us humans will not be pushed around any longer. Naruto sighed before shaking his head. The only thing you'll accomplish is creating an endless cycle of hatred and pain. You'll make it even more difficult for humans worldwide, it will be a massive genocide. Is that really what you want for humankind to come to an end, because that's what will happen if you continue down this path. Naruto retorted gritting his teeth and anger, as he couldn't believe the bullshit that this man was spouting. Enough talk Naruto Uzumaki. I'm going to end this now, I'm not going to toy with you any longer. And just to let you know I let you hit me all those times, so I could gauge what level you were on. And I must say you're comparable to an ultimate class devil you're almost at Satan class, but you're not quite there yet. It's truly a shame that you waste your potential being with those nasty supernatural beings when you should be with us humans. Maybe I feel more at home here in Kyoto amongst the yaokai. Jin shook his head in disappointment. Very well you've made your choice. Jin said as he rushed at Naruto who readied himself for the battle of his life. In the courtyard outside of the imperial palace, the yaokai were currently fighting against the countless elemental thralls that threatened to overrun them. Many were injured some even dead, as most attacks had little to no effect on the elemental thralls. While they may be able to destroy them temporarily they always came back only Sesameru's Bakusega could effectively destroy them preventing them from regenerating. And Yakimi sliced apart several earth thralls with her light whip, only for them to regenerate seconds later. 
Gritting her teeth, she unleashed a wave of poison from her hands, which had zero effect on the thralls. I thought the elemental force was a low-tier sacred gear. She thought aloud showing her frustration. It's supposed to be a low tier, but if a sacred gear wielder's emotion and will are strong enough the sacred gear can become stronger. Yusaka replied as she unleashed a massive wave of fox fire at the wind thrall advancing towards her. The wind thrall completely absorbed Yusaka's fox fire into its body, turning it into a walking fire cyclone. Yusaka quickly dodged a blast of wind-enhanced flames as she landed next to Kurikas, who had finally managed to slay several elemental thralls. They're composed of the five elements which means we must destroy the elements themselves in order to stop these things. Or we must obliterate them with an immense amount of force. The Karasu Tengu explained while gripping his shakajin tightly. Isaka-sama. What? Yusaka answered to one of the many yaokai currently fighting against the elemental thralls. The elemental golems are pushing us back, I advise that we temporarily retreat for now. Many are injured some are even dead. Isaka frowned as she glanced over the battlefield, noticing that many of her people were either injured, dying or dead. Biting her lip taking a deep breath Yusaka found her resolve. Those who are still willing to fight stay here with us. And those who wish to retreat take the wounded with you. I will not hold it against you if you choose to leave. Isaka announced loudly so that all of her subordinates could hear. Din frowned. Sure, leave you good for nothing pussies we don't need your help anyways. The Rajan yelled out, causing those who chose to leave to flinch, while those who chose to stay glared at him. Kurikas shook his head in disappointment. You would be disappointed in how your son is turning out Kensei. The old Karasu Tengu thought. A beautiful young woman with a voluptuous figure, long black hair with split bangs, and has six pupil-less monochromatic red eyes and her teeth are all fangs. Her attire consists of a green kimono, a red obi, and a golden sash. The kimono features a purple interior, and it is open at her shoulders, giving view to her large dot. Her most noticeable physical trait is the lower half of her body, which is that of a giant spider adorned with a large skull design on its back. She was the current leader of the Jorgumo clan within Kyoto Yakai faction, and her name was Mia. Mia scowled at the region. Do you have no shame let them be. You shouldn't criticize them for their choices. She snapped while ensnaring multiple elemental thralls in her silk threads. With a quick pull of her hands the thread slicing apart the earth golems with ease. However, the pieces began to pull themselves back together, causing her to scowl as she pinned down all of the separate pieces with more of her spider silk. Jin glared at the Jorgumo. They're cowards it's simple as that I'm just not going to be nice about it, no one likes someone who lies all the time. And Yukimi demolished several fire thralls with her light whip, as several aquatic yaokai doused the remains with water. Jin san you really need to learn to keep your mouth shut. Because one of these days you are going to anger the wrong person, and you're gonna get yourself killed. Your father would be so disappointed in you right now. She said without a shred of sympathy in her voice. How dare you bring my father into this? Jin yelled before a massive blast of fox fire came crashing down in front of him, causing him to yelp. Yusaka was glaring daggers at the region, a look that basically said I dare you to say another word. Jin said I suggest you keep any further comments to yourself. Because if I hear one more outburst from you they'll be looking for a new replacement for you. Yusaka said with a look that promised pain. Sesameru destroyed Gollum all after Gollum with his mighty Bakusega, as he glared at the unending army of the elemental thralls. The wielder's not here and yet they still keep on spawning how. The strongest in Yugami thought aloud. There must be some way for him to remotely spawn them from far away. Sesameru turned his head and came face to face with his mother. Ahayu do you have any suggestions on how we can stop them from spawning? Because this is getting real old really fast. Sesameru said aloud. Now don't get him wrong Sesameru enjoyed a good battle here and there, but he hated opponents that had no will of their own like these mindless elemental golems. There is no challenge in destroying them, the problem was that they kept on respawning. I would say taking out the wielder would be the best way of ending the elemental golems for good. In Yukimi said before destroying another elemental golem with her light whip, as Sesameru destroyed its remains with Bakusega. Oh, heavenly flames carried from the heavens down to the earth. I beseech thee lend me your strength and allow me to incinerate my foes as I unleash your heavenly wrath. Infernal blaze of the nine-tailed fox. Yusaka chanted before stomping her foot on the ground. The ground underneath several dozen elemental thralls began to turn red, as cracks formed, the earth itself had begun bubbling turning into boiling lava. The golems began to sink in the small river of boiling lava, before a pillar of ghostly blue flames erupted from the lava shooting up into the night sky. The pillar expanded engulfing and destroying many more elemental thralls. Isaka looked satisfied with her work after she destroyed countless golems in one go. But she couldn't help but frown, these elemental thralls kept on appearing there had to be a solution, other than taking out the wielder. 
Something isn't right here it's almost as if Yusaka thought as she knew there was a solution, but she didn't have all night to wait for Naruto to defeat that thing. I have faith in Naruto that he'll defeat him, Yusaka spat out the word and with so much venom that it caused several yaokai to flinch, as they had never seen their gentle and kind-hearted leader so angry before. However, something caught Yusaka's attention, there were several small objects embedded in several trees in the back. Maybe I just found our solution. The blonde-haired beauty thought. Naruto was sent crashing into the ground hard as he gasped in pain his body was trembling. I'm going to feel that one in the morning that's for sure. Naruto groaned as he pulled himself out of the rubble and staggered to his feet. As he focused his gaze on the man standing before him, he spat out a glob of blood as he glared daggers at Jin, who was continuing to fight against his remaining clones. Thankfully for Naruto's clones were able to destroy the rest of Jin's elemental thralls and were able to prevent him from summoning any more. Naruto needed to think of a way to destroy Jin completely, but how he already hit this bastard with everything he had. Rasen Shuriken and Kirin were all but useless against him, since he can control any type of elemental force, whether it be natural or artificial. Not even his Rasengan or its vast variant of alternate forms were able to do any permanent damage. How on Naruto think? Think. There's got to be one jutsu in my arsenal that can at least do enough damage to slow him down. Naruto thought as he clenched his fists tightly as Jin destroyed another one of his clones. Naruto's eyes widened when he remembered his ultimate, well actually it was Kurama's ultimate jutsu, but nonetheless it should be enough to deal with Jin. Naruto closed his eyes as he took a deep breath clenching his fists, as he could feel his nine-tailed chakra mode beginning to get weaker. Opening his eyes Naruto placed the bottom of both of his palms together as it was aimed at Jin. As Naruto released countless small orbs of both positive black chakra and negative white chakra. He slowly began to pull it into a single point right in front of his palms, that chakra began to take the shape of a dark colored sphere. Releasing a small groan to Naruto compressed the sphere reducing its eyes from a beach ball to a ping pong ball. Hey. Jin hears a little going away present. Naruto growled as Jin turned around as his eyes widened at the amount of concentrated energy and the small sphere of power in Naruto's palms. Naruto's remaining clones quickly grabbed hold of Jin as they tried their damnedest to hold him in place. Do it boss. The clones yelled. Take this. Tailed beast ball. The small sphere shot forward throwing Naruto back as he crashed into the ground. The condensed sphere changed into a powerful red blast that tore apart the ground as it flew towards its target. Jin's eyes widened as the small blast of red energy hit him dead on, the resulting contact caused a massive explosion, obliterating nearly a mile's worth of forest. The shockwave from the explosion not only destroyed the cross Kunu was tied to, but also sent her flying backwards. Naruto quickly caught Kunu as he skidded across the ground. You did it Ani Sama. Kunu cheered with joy as Naruto chuckled. Yeah I did Naruto said before his eyes narrowed gritting his teeth in anger. How could that bastard still be alive, he just hit him point blank with a compressed tailed beast ball. As the smoke cleared Jin stood there, but he was heavily damaged blood was pouring out of his mouth and his wounds, he was also missing his left arm and part of his torso. That wasn't half bad kid I should really commend you for that, but Jin growled as he focused his sights on his damaged body. Unfortunately for you one of the devils I absorbed was a member of the Phoenix clan. The deformed and insane man screamed as his damaged body was cloaked in fire before completely reforming and healing his body. Jin released a sigh before testing his new arm by clenching his fist a few times. Well now I think it's time I kill you. Naruto pushed Kunu behind him he was sure that would have finished him off. I guess I'll just have to try Naruto stop mid-sentence as he narrowly dodged getting impaled by the aim no Murakumo no Tsurugi. Damn I forgot that sword can be controlled telekinetically by the user. Naruto thought as he grabbed Kunu and jumped away. Gently setting Kunu down Naruto turned around and came face to face with Jin who had a smirk on his face. Delivering an earth-shattering uppercut to Naruto, sending the young Uzumaki flying high into the air. Jin appeared above Naruto before bringing both his fists down into Naruto's chest, sending him crashing into the ground. Opening his hand Jin unleashed a powerful bombardment of aura at Naruto, which hit Naruto dead on causing a large explosion and one could hear a yelp of pain from within the cloud of smoke. Ani Sama Kunu cried wishing she was stronger so that she can help her surrogate older brother. Jin landed on the ground as he watched the smoke clear as Naruto's chakra cloak was fading fast. Grinning the deformed man turned his sights back on Kunu as he slowly advanced towards her. Jin picked up the crimson gourd before quickly grabbing Kunu by the front of her maiko and lifting her off the ground. The narrow opening of the gourd once again created its 